do you really expect to see a head-to-head -head battle between Scott, number 32, for the Owls, and Flemings, number 44, for the Red Raiders? I expect a head-to-head -head matchup when Rice has the ball, because Tech will be playing a man-to-man. -man. But Rice is going to play a lot of matchup 1-3-1 one, one zone, so I'm not sure it'll be a matchup on both ends. Scott, the 6'10 center, jumping against Austin at 6'5, and the Red Raiders, the shorter team, get the uh, opening 10. This is Brian Moore looking against Marvin Moore. Obviously, no, uh, no relationship. This is Lance Hughes with the ball, working against Dana Hardy. And Rice does open in a man-to-man. -man. Does that surprise you a little bit? That does. They practiced all day yesterday in their matchup 1-3-1 one one and then and open up in a man. Well, Lamont Dale tries the first shot of the ball game, didn't get it to go, and Brent Scott grabs his first rebound. Wide open, Adam Peaks, the freshman. So each team's taking a shot and missed it. Rice gets the offensive rebound with Sam with uh, Tori Andrews. Now, how about the Tech defense? Uh, Tech's going to play hard-nosed man-to-man. They're going to really deny on the wings and look for a lot of backdoor cuts from the Rice wing players. There's Scott against Germans, and Scott wins that first battle. Scott is 25 pounds heavier, 250, and three inches taller at 6'10", so Flemings has got his hands full. He's got his hands full, but Will has, naturally has real long arms, so that's going to be a good matchup all day of two of the premier, premier post players in the conference. Rice set a record of 5-4 and four in fourth place in the conference. Texas Tech 4-6, and six, tied with SMU for fifth place in the league right now. And here's Rice, 1-3-1 one, one matchup. So watch Dana Harding. He'll really have to work hard running that baseline to cover corner to corner. First game was won by Rice, 84-69, to 69, a 15-point decision in Lubbock. There's Fleming. Those ball arms were never more in evidence than that read. And a great entry pass by uh, by Allen Alston. So we've got a basket by Scott and a basket by Fleming. And we've got another one if they allow it. The basket's going to count. Well, Tech's going to have to do a real good job in transition basketball, not only of getting back, but as they're coming back, turn around and watch the ball. Marvin Moore is just lightning quick, and he'll grab the ball just like then, and just he'll be back up the floor and beat everyone up there. So Tech's going to have to do a good job of backpedaling by turning around and watching the ball come at him. It looks to me like Moore is off to the same kind of start that he was in the first game, when I think he scored 22 for Rice in that first game to lead them. He sure did. Uh, Moore and Scott were the big players. It was interesting. The post player and the off guard for Tech were also leading scores for them so it's a good matchup all the way around rise five tech two we are a minute and a half into the ball game this is Brian Moore who led the conference in assists last year number 10 that's Moore with the ball Lance Hughes whose dad played for Texas back in the late 1950s I talked about the key of the baseline guy in the 1-3-1 one, one matchup running and the other key is to front the post player Marvin in a 1-3-1 one, one matchup zone you got to front the post Marvin Moore almost coming up with a loose basketball. Raiders kind of hunting and pecking right now, looking for a soft spot in that zone. This is Lamont Dale. Skip pass to Bryant Moore. Back to Dale, wide open to the basket. Got it. No, oh, got underneath and missed the shot. But put back by Flemons. So Flemons has four, and it's a 5-4 ball game right in front. This is Adam Peaks, freshman out of Kansas. Dory Andrews. Wide open, Dana Hardy passed up the shot, gave it to Andrews, and he traveled. Our three officials today are Jim McDaniels, the referee from, Ex from DeSoto, Tony Stigliano from Waco, and Lincoln Weber from DeSoto. Those are the three officials. There you saw a brief look at uh, Scott Thompson. Both he and James Dickey are the same age, 37 years old. Two of the finest young coaches in the, in the country, and they're especially strong at preparing. Watch how well Tech's prepared to go against the matchup zone. Flemons, yes, sir. Flemons has the first six points of the ball game for the Texas Tech Red Raiders, and right now it is Flemons six, Rice five. Red Scott's about to make it 7-6. to six. He is a load. He's 250 pounds is what they list him at, and I, I'd be happy to give him another 10 or 15. And he's 6'10". Clemens is 6'7", but as uh, Reed Geddes pointed out, does have those exceptionally long arms. Here's Lance Hughes for three. Yes, sir, the Georgetown freshman drops it right through the bottom of the barrel. I'll tell you what, the team's having any trouble shooting right now, Brent, uh, Reed. They sure look at Brent's got a good job of holding him off. He's, he did a good job. The tendency there is to push off on the guy's back, and he did a good job of not pushing off, waiting and let the ball come to him. Live action, Tech 9, Rice th 7, 16.55 to play first half. Here's Scott working on Flemons again. Banked it in. And so far, Brent Scott has six points. Will Flemons has six points. So the two big guys have been going at it hot and heavy. Score is tied at 9, 16.44 to play first half. Rice, of course, has won 17 games in Lost State. Tech on the years 12 and 10. Lamont Dale, Adam Peaks with the rebound. Great job of blocking out, blocking out by Adam Peaks. Dana Hardy with those socks almost up to his knees. And I'll tell you about that as the story as the game goes on. Brent Scott just missed it, and Austin grabbed the rebound. 
What's the story on those long socks with uh, Dana Hardy? Somebody on the team daring to wear them that way? Or Kenneth what? Ward dared. He said, you won't wear your socks like that. And he started wearing them, and they had three wins. And he said, hey, look, I'm not superstitious. We lost to U of H, and I'm still going to wear my socks like that. And I tell you, on a guy his size, up to his knees, it looks like he's all legs, doesn't it? <laughs> it sure does. Dana Hardy picked up the foul just as we we're talking about him. That's his first foul. We're going to talk a lot about the matchup zone. What a matchup zone. There, there, there's a look at Dana Sox. What a matchup zone is, it's a zone but played with man-to-man -man principles. Bryant Moore with a big three for Texas Tech. These two teams are pretty good three-point shooting teams. As a matter of fact, Rice is the best in the league at it. That's right, and Tech's got two or three guys in the top ten and, and another one that could be if he had more attempts. So look for a lot of three-pointers today. Tech by three, 12 to nine, 15, 52 to play first half. Scott foul from behind, I believe, by Flemings. Is there some Flemings, that'll be foul number one and against the Red Raiders number two. Tech made an adjustment that time. Brent Scott's off to a great start and really getting the ball well. They had Allen Alston right behind him ready to step in and double up on him. Well, I don't want to get stuck hung up on socks, but we'll look when we come back at Brett Scott, who wears no socks. <laughs> we'll be back with a three-point Texas Tech lead. A nation's people are a nation's strength. And the strength of a bank called Nation's Bank. A bank that now has the resources and the locations to reach one out of every four people in the nation. A bank that measures its success with the success of every community it serves, from Baltimore to Miami to El Paso. It's no wonder a bank that sees its strength in the neighborhoods of a nation would today be called Nation's Bank. In trying to make an artistic statement, one should be careful not to let one's personal aroma do the talking. In order not to offend the critics, I recommend Right Guard Sports Stick. It provides maximum protection and the freshest scents, a sublime palette of odoriferous emanations. After all, a true artiste should be remembered for his inspiration, not his perspiration. Right Guard Sports Stick, anything less would be uncivilized. beer in Texas could bring you Clint Black's Texas Tour. Miller Lite. Texas brewed, Texas proud. It's it, and that's that. And is intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the video or audio portions of this program without the express prior written consent of Raycom Incorporated is forbidden. Both teams off to a fast start. Tech has hit five out of their first eight shots, 63%. Bryce has hit four out of their first six, 67%. And the uh, Red Raiders have used a couple of three-pointers to go out in front by three. Lincoln Weber indicates that the ball still belongs to the Rice Owls. There's James Dickey, the 37-year-old. That's an Eddie Sutton mannerism right there. He and Sutton are still very close. Do you notice that little quick clapping? Don't you, you remember seeing Sutton do that? Too many times, I'm afraid. <laughs> I wish I wouldn't have seen him clapping so much. All right, this is Rice, Adam Peaks, Corey Andrews, Marvin Moore, partially blocked, I believe, by Lamont Dale. Moore got it back and missed it again, and Brett Scott, he may have been fouled from behind. I believe Alan Austin got him. Yep, he did. Alan Austin commits the foul. His first three against the Red Raiders. Down there a second ago, Lance Hughes actually had perfect position on Brent Scott. Lance Hughes, though, at, at 170 pounds, just gets shoved out of the way. He is no contest down there for the big fella. He was hipped out of there, wasn't he? He sure was, and that's a big hip to be hipped out on. Brent Scott going for his seventh and eighth points of the afternoon. There's number seven. Reed, how about the uh, blue background, the curtain background up there? That's got to be pretty nice for a shooter, doesn't it? Uh, no distractions whatsoever. It's very nice. The worst thing you want to look at is like a tunnel or a runway or just empty space where you feel like you're shooting in the Astrodome. So a, a curtain like that is, is, is a great shooter's gym. So the first half uh, advantage belongs to the Owls in that respect because they're shooting at that blue velvet curtain down there behind the uh, goal. Here's Texas Tech. Shot missed by Allen Austin and rebounded by Marvin Moore, who's on the move. Play an interesting story about Marvin Moore and Killeen Guards when we get a chance. This is Brent Scott, triple teamed and tipped out of there by Brian Moore. There's an outstanding guard at Killeen right now by the name of Marcus Moss, another double M guard like Marvin Moore. He's already signed, I think, with Loyola Marymount, averaging about 40 points a game. Wow. Okay, Rice with the ball and Tech with the lead, 12 to 11. Brent Scott 
Powers it up there, and Clemens has knocked it away from him. And the Red Raiders run three on four. Clemens. Oh, got the roll. Nice play. Good pass, too. It's a great pass and great body control for the big fella to catch that on the stride and get it back up. 14-11. Tech by three. 14-39 to play first half. Marvin Moore wide open for three. Yes, sir. Marvin Moore now has five points. First three-pointer for the Owls. Well, Marvin Moore's picking up right where he left off. He really was, was shooting the ball well against Houston in their narrow loss earlier in the week, and it looks like he's coming out shooting the ball well again. There's Dana Hardy with a great move to Adam Peaks. We've been tied now on three different occasions. Peaks going to shoot it inside to... And, and Torrey Andrews comes up with the shot. I like Torrey Andrews. He's a power forward at 6'5". He's, he's wide. He's about 225 pounds. He'd he's aggressive. He's hard-nosed. And he replaced a 6'10 power forward in Kenneth Rourke. So he's really a, a fine player. Rourke is getting ready to come in the ballgame right now. He's sitting in front of the scorer's table. Boy, what a great asset to be able to bring him in off the bench. This is Bryant Moore. Lance Hughes. Brent Scott's doing a great job of fronting Will Clemens. On, right there. Look at him fight to get around the floor. Oh, nice pass. Nice pass. And Clemens is fouled by Adam Peaks. That's an excellent job by Brent Scott. That's exactly what Scott Thompson wants him to do. The weak side help was just late getting there. You should never blame the guy guarding someone for a pass that goes over your head. Someone on the weak side needs to be there for that. Doesn't take long to work up a sweat in basketball. You saw, saw that picture of Torrey Andrews. We're not even seven minutes into the ball game, and some of these guys are already drenched. And it's not because they don't have air conditioning here now. It is now an air-conditioned jungle gym. <laughs> You're right. They have put in air conditioning. Well, this guy's been to the free throw line a few times. There's the air conditioning. Well, I guess that's it, isn't it? And I tell you what, you're in Altry Court in, in July or August, and you're working out, and there's no air conditioning going. You know you've been here. You played a few games in here, I guess, even in January and February when it was pretty hot, didn't you? That's exactly right. Two shots for the big fella. Clemens, and boy, is he a good free throw shooter. Third best in the league, 78%. And he's been to the line now 183 times, more than anybody else in the league, except Reggie Smith of TCU, who's played three more ball games. Well, Will, Will Clemens is just simply the, the heart and soul of Texas Tech. He's in the top five in five different statistical categories of all conference leaders. He leads the team in everything, and he's, he's definitely the one of, if not the premier player in the he's conference. He's got 10 points right now, Reed. Four buckets and two out of two at the line. There's Brad Dale, the guy who played like Larry Bird last week when he came in against Baylor. Sure did. Had 10 points in one half. Really shot the ball well, got some big rebounds, and had a couple of assists. Clemens getting a bit of a rest now as Brad Dale comes in the ball game, number 33, a 6'6 six, six sophomore from Amarillo. There's Kenneth Rourke with a hook shot. Wouldn't go, and there's the rebound by Texas uh, Tech Stacy Bailey, who's in the ball game now, number 22. Brian Moore to Stacy Bailey. Watch the three. He can shoot it. Back through the bottom. Well, he Texas said, Tech now has three four, three pointers. He sat over there on the bench and came in with his arm cocked. Here's Corey Andrews at the other end. Rourke tips the rebound, out of bounds, I believe. That shot oh, right. James Dickey a little indignant over that call. Let's let's see that three-pointer a moment ago. Well, Stacy Bailey is an outstanding outside shooter. He comes into the game, and there's no question what he's going to do. He's going to go spot up behind the three-point line, and when he gets the ball, he has a green light to put it up. Damon Ashley has come to the ball game. Ashley did not play in the game against Bader when the Raiders played last last week. Here's Dana Hardy for three. Right through the middle. That is the that's the fifth three-point uh, goal that we've had in the ball game. Three by Texas Tech. And two by Rice. 19-19 is our score. We've been tied now, what, Ed, four times? Ed Burleson, our statistician, tells us we've been tied four times. How many lead changes, Ed? Four lead changes. Lance Hughes missing. Rebound run out of there nicely by Adam Peaks and lost it. There's Grant Dale. Score tied at 19, fourth time we've been tied. The place a, a matchup zone is vulnerable is on skip passes and corner. That pass right there. Whoa! Out of bounds. Tony Stigley on the tells it. Stepping out of bounds just barely on the play with Stacy Bailey. There's uh, Scott Thompson. He and James Dickey, both 37 years young. I guess it should, I should have said the zone's vulnerable if you execute the pass. Lean it out of bounds, bounds doesn't make anything vulnerable. That was a skip pass that was a little, had a little too much skip in it, didn't it? That's right. Here's Dana Hardy. Score tied at 19, 12 18 to play first half. Rice and Texas Tech. Adam Peak. Yes. These two teams are showing us how to shoot the three here this afternoon. But that is the uh, third for the for the Rice Owls, and Tech also has three three pointers. 22 19 in favor of the Owls. 12 minutes to play. Bailey almost tied it up with his three point effort. Rebound run out of there by the guy with the long socks on, Dana Hardy. Almost took it coast to coast. Rourke for the rebound. Rice gets a new 45. 
Almost over and back. They were real close to over and back. Rice 22, Texas Tech 19. Rourke 6'10. Tries to dump it inside and was fouled by Brian Moore. That was a good job of Brian Moore of doubling up. Kenneth Warwick, I was trying to think of guys in the conference that have a better turnaround jump shot than Kenneth Warwick, and, and I thought of, you know, up churches is comparable and a couple guys for Texas, but he's got as soft a touch for a big guy on a turnaround jump shot as anybody I've seen. That is the fourth team foul against Texas Tech, two against the Owls so far. We'll be back, three-point lead for the Rice Owls, 11.39 to go. It's not that we're out to burst any balloons here. But the 1992 Buick Skylark comes with something as standard equipment that's optional on practically every import in Skylark's class. Anti-lock brakes. When you add up the cost of the car, that could save you almost $1,000. That could, of course, also help save you your life. Check this out. I'm sick of dating, you gotta fake it. So much madness, you just can't take it. Hey, don't go through this, I know what feels good. While the best thing's always so misunderstood. Just give me what the doctor ordered. Dr. Pepper. Just what the doctor ordered. Just give me a Dr. Pepper, we want it. Whoa, just what the doctor ordered. The taste is made to water, we love it. Dr. Pepper. Did you know the cost of two business calls from these San Diego pet stores to Dallas may surprise you? Of course they're easy to feed. With AT&T Long Distance, your small business can get the quality you trust at extremely competitive prices. They really do make perfect pets. Even though the other company would like you to believe, they always save you lots of money. That's my big savings? That's it. Not exactly the catch of the day. Competitive price. Another AT&T advantage. Now I got a question. Rita, I got a question for you. Does he mean they want James Dickey or Dick Vitale? But they wanted Dick Vitale, they got me. I, I, I don't know whether, whether we won or lost. <laughs> we won with you. Thanks, There's James buddy. Dickey, the head coach. 50% for Rice right now, 8 out of 16. 54% for Tech, 7 out of 13. That's the field goal percentage. And the Texas Tech Red Raiders trailing by three. And the Owls have the basketball. Marvin Moore, to Adam Peaks. Interesting, during the timeout, both coaches got their big fellas back in at the same time. I think we'll see that all afternoon. When one of them goes out, the other one will go out. Now, Tech is really is at a disadvantage size-wise since Rice has two 6'10 players on the court. Kenneth Rourke and uh, Brent Scott both at 6'10. Clemens is 6'7, the biggest Tech player on the court. Peaks for three. Rebounded by Ashley at 6'7. Shoots it ahead to Hughes. This should be an easy two. Whoa! No. Wow! <laughs> can he get up? Boy, he can get up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes it a 22-21 score. His dad, incidentally, played basketball at the University of Texas for Marshall Hughes back in 1957-59. There's a nice reverse layup by... There's that back cut we were talking about. And if Tech continues to play as tight as they are out on the wing, look for a lot of back cuts like that. That's David Holmes, incidentally. Number four was in the ballgame who just had that uh, dunk for the Rice Owls. David is a 6'4 junior out of Jackson, Michigan. Look at Ashley come after his own shot. And the Owls come out of there with it. Marvin Moore, 24-21 Rice, getting close to the 10-minute mark. Marvin Moore moving inside and lost the basketball, but he may have been fouled. Let's look at that dunk again by Hughes. That was impressive. I've always said, why lay it up when you can do a 180 behind your head? <laughs> Boy, he did it too, didn't he? You know, a lot of people thought he wasn't physically strong enough to play in the Southwest Conference, Lance Hughes, but he's proven them wrong. He, I am really impressed with Lance Hughes. He reminds me kind of a cross between maybe a little bit of Chris Mullen and a little bit of Rex Chapman. And uh, I think he's going to be a great one for years to come. That foul a moment ago was on Bryant Moore, his second and the fifth against the Red Raiders as the team. Bryce has committed two fouls, one by Adam Peaks and one by Dana Hardy. 24-21, Rice by three, getting very close to the 10-minute mark now. Here's Ashley for three. And Marvin Moore runs the rebound now. Well, Ashley's not shy about putting it up either. Adam Peaks tried to feed it to Scott. Got to be off one of the owls, I would guess. 10-0-3 to play in the first half. 24-21. Now back in the ballgame for Texas Tech is their defensive specialist, number 23, Lamont Dale. 
Not to be confused with Brad Dale or David Dale. Let's they are not related. Not, not to any of the three Dales. No, no. <laughs> uh, or Jack Dale. I'm giving you a hard time about last week. I mispronounced, uh, I misnamed Brad Dale as David Dale, and I apologize to his family and friends for that mistake. Well, if you went down and talked to him, he didn't hold that against you. He sure didn't. Not the kind of half he had. You could have probably called him Larry Bird. You would have been happy for him. There's the lob pass into Flemings with the long arms again. Gets it up and in. Will Flemings now has 12 points. And the Red Raiders are back to within one, 24-23. Marvin Moore, Clemens had the rebound, lost it to Peaks. Peaks is going to power it up there and draw the foul. Let's see Clemens again. Good move by Clemens on this pass read. Here's Brent Scott again fronting, and this is not Brent Scott's fault. Someone has got to be back there. The back man right there, Marvin Moore, has got to be there quicker. And that's a bit of a disadvantage because Will Clemens, as big as he is and as long as his, arm, his arms are, Marvin Moore's only 5'11", so there ain't a whole lot he's going to do down there unless, unless Will Clemens brings the ball down below his waist. There's uh, Scott Thompson. The foul was on Damon Ashley, and that's number six against the Red Raiders. And at the line now will be Adam Peaks. A 6'5", 200-pound freshman from Leewood, Kansas. So much was made about when Rice lost their leading scorer, Chase Maggs. Adam Peaks, as a freshman, has stepped in and really done a job. With Maggs in the lineup, Rice Owls were 8-4. and four. Without him, they're 9-4. and four. And that's mainly because Adam Peaks has stepped up and played so well. He's been up and down like a lot of freshmen. He had 20 points one night and then didn't score the next night. But he's really done a good job. Chase Mag instantly was declared academically ineligible in January, early in January, and since that time, the Owls have done very well to adjusting to play without him. Scott Tynes is in the ballgame now for Rice, number 23 out at one of the forward spots in that zone. 26-23 Rice, 9-15 to play in the first half. Oh, Scott was uh, rather Clemens open for a moment. Well, what, what do you suppose? What a tip in by Lamont Dale at 6-3. The senior from Snow Hill, Maryland, got up and tipped that one in. Nice tip in by a 6-3 forward. We're down to a one-point ball game again. And wide open is Scott Tynes, and he traveled to the ball. You know what we forgot to do before the game? One thing for our homework, we didn't ask Will Flemons what length of sleeve he wears. He's got to wear a 38-inch sleeve, doesn't he? I tell you what, he didn't buy stuff off the rack. I no, can really. assure you of that. Because at 6'7", he's able to do things against 6'10 guys that you wouldn't normally be able to do without the arm length that he has. And he uses them so well. There Frank. it is again. Let's see what he does this time. Back out to Dale for three. Another three-pointer. Four three-pointers for the Texas Tech Red Raiders, and they go back out in front, 28 to 26. This is a good basketball game. Marvin Moore working on Lamont Dale. And the officials say it'll belong to the Rice House, new 45. And here comes Tory Andrews back in the ballgame. Here's Flemons inside again. Five Rice Owls are running. Good job of Will Flemons of noticing he doesn't have a shot, kicking it back out, and that's a good inside-outside attack. And that's what you want as a coach. You don't want to come down and fire it up from the outside. Go inside first and then come back and take a shot. Tory Andrews, big power forward and had the ball blocked. And Damon Ashley may have gotten a little bit of him. He did. Ashley commits his second foul. And for the Raiders now, a distinct advantage for Rice Reed. That is the 17th foul against the Red Raiders. So with 8.25 to go now, the Owls are in the one and one. And that's a big advantage because Rice, as we said earlier, is the best shooting free throw shooting team in the conference. So it is a big advantage. As soon as Rice can get to the line, it's to their advantage. Tory Andrews will be at the stripe to shoot a pair. Rice is shooting 71.5%. The second best free throw shooting team in the league is Texas Tech, and they're 69 and a half percent. So these two are the best two free throw shooting teams in the league. And talking about Tech, they've really got two guys that kill their percentage. Austin shooting 40 percent, and Damon Ashley shooting 50 percent. You take away those two, and I'm not sure we don't have two equally matched free throw shooting teams. Rice has not missed a free throw. They are seven out of seven. Texas Tech is two out of two, so neither team has missed a free throw so far. Sam Campbell just, excuse me, Frank. Sam Campbell just checked in, and it's going to be fun to watch him play because he is just. It's like he got a wake-up call about four or five games ago and has really been playing. That 28-all tie is the fifth tie of the ballgame, and it doesn't last until Damon Ashley hits another three-pointer. And Texas Tech now has five trays for the afternoon and lead this ballgame 31-28. Remember, the first time they met out in Lubbock, it was a 15-point Rice victory on the uh, Red Raiders' home floor. And the ball just knocked out of bounds by Sam Campbell. It was interesting. After that game, Texas Tech players said we were just flat. And I don't know how you're flat when Rice Owls are coming to town. Maybe that was just an excuse, but uh, I know it got under the skin of some of the Rice Owls. They were talking about it at practice yesterday. Well, especially when Tech was picked to finish seventh in the league and Rice finished to pick to finish, pick to finish second in the league. Dale misses the three-pointer. And the rebound by Stacy Bailey, and I believe he's fouled by either Campbell or by Dana Hardy. Let's see who the foul's on. Foul on number 
We'll be selecting the Southwest Airlines player of the game at the conclusion of today's telecast, so be sure to stay with us for that. The foul was on Dana Hardy. So we're going to have a timeout as Dana Hardy commits his second foul, only number three against the Rice Owls. We've got a great game that's going 31-28 in favor of the Texas Tech Red Raiders with 7.48 to play in the first half. Just an imitator. My man has great taste through and through. He knows a quality brew, and I do too. Schlitz malt liquor bull. Yeah, he's brave like a gladiator, smoking like a radiator, chill like a refrigerator, warm a lady's heart like an incubator. Nobody does it like a smooth operator. No one does it like a fool. Word, Schlitz malt liquor bull. Larry Zonka, three of the straight Super Bowls. After that. He went to see sports personalities, as well as our own team of sports instructors, help host Norwegian Cruise Line cruises. No other cruise line has such an all-star lineup. Norwegian Cruise Line, the best vacation you've ever had. Plus, contact with someone like number 39, Larry Zonka. I want to remind you that uh, we've been telling you a little bit earlier that the guy calls himself Damon Ashley. It is Damon Ashley, as if it were spelled D-U-H-M-O-N. Damon Ashley, the 6'7", 200-pound junior from Denver, Colorado. Thanks, Kelly. Appreciate that. Kelly Robinson giving us uh, that information. It is Damon Ashley. Okay, with the score, we've had five ties and seven lead changes. And right now, Tech leads at 31-28. There's Bailey for three. Another three-pointer. Stacy Bailey has two, and Texas Tech now has six three-point baskets in the ballgame. And they lead it by six points, their biggest lead of the day, 34-28. Clemens comes up with a turnover. And the Red Raiders are off and running. Number three is Chad Collins, a freshman from San Antonio. Red Raiders trying to add to their biggest lead of the first half with 7.20 to play, 34-28, and here's a steal by Peaks. The freshman from Kansas is in for the layup and didn't get it. Nice follow, however, by Sam Campbell, and he's fouled, I believe, by Flemons. If so, that'll be number two on the big fella. Adam Peaks went in, and he was afraid of getting that shot blocked. Hey, sometimes you got to just go in and say, hey, look, I may, I may get this block, but so what? This was a nice, pretty move, but it's not pretty if you don't stick it in the hole. He should have just gone as strong as he could into the hole. Incidentally, uh, Kelly tells me that Ashley, Devon Ashley, was one out of his last 17 three-point efforts before making that last one. And Sam Campbell is at the line with a foul indeed being charged to Chad Collins, his first. And Campbell will be shooting the one and one. Sam Campbell, 6'2", 180-pound sophomore from Austin Reagan High School. And we still have not had a missed free throw. Rice is 8 out of 8 at the stripe. Tech is 2 out of 2. There's Scott Thompson. Sam Campbell's coming off a bit of an ankle injury, and it doesn't look like it's slowing him down at all. He didn't play much earlier in the year and hadn't done much. In the last two or three games, especially against Baylor and Texas, he's really turned it on. Rice makes eight consecutive free throws before they miss one, and we have a whistle and a foul. Foul is on the Owls. Who's it on? Sam Campbell picks up the foul. His first, number four against the Owls. It's a 34-29 Texas Tech lead with 7-10 before halftime. There's Campbell sitting down on the uh, Rice bench. Chad Collins, the San Antonio freshman, number three with the ball. Rice in that zone. Stacy Bailey, Will Flemons. Tell you what, at Texas Tech's done a pretty good job of shooting Rice out of that zone. Here's Devon Ashley, another three-pointer. Is he a streak shooter or not? Was one for 17, and he's now hit his last two in a row. He puts up phenomenal numbers in the minutes he plays. He's a real impact player. He comes in, he gets great rebounds, puts up a lot of shots, and doesn't play a lot of minutes. And coach just kind of says, hey, look, let's see if you're hot. And if you are, we're going with you. We may have to check the record book here. Tech has seven three-pointers here in the first half. That might be a Southwest Conference record for a half. Seven three-pointers in the first half for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Marvin Moore in big difficulty. Manages to come up with a loose ball. Give it to Scott. 15 seconds to shoot. 37-29, biggest lead of the ballgame for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Up by eight, 6-19 to play. 
Hardy guarded by Collins. Five seconds to shoot. Three seconds to shoot. He got it away, and who got it? Well, the clock went off, but he'd already taken the shot. The ball will belong to the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Great defense by Texas Tech, and that's obvious anytime you get a 45-second violation. But Rice reset their offense four or five times, tried three or four different plays, and Tech had to answer each time. Here's Texas Tech on the offense. Will Fleming to the ball. He has 12 points in the early going. Rice has switched to a man-to-man. -man. Let's see what he does against Scott. Puts up a long outside jumper and got it. He That's has six baskets and two free throws. 14 points for Will Flemons. Well, let's see what Scott does at the other end. He's stripped to the ball, knocked out of bounds, and belong to Rice. That's going to be a tough matchup for Rice. Will Fleming shoots that shot so well that Brent Scott's going to have to come out and pressure him. And the other thing Will Flemons does so well is that he is that he pump fakes this shot too. And Will Flemons is really mobile, and he's more agile than Brent Scott. So Brent Scott's going to have a tough time out there on the floor on him. Scott, three inches taller, 25 pounds heavier. Tory Andrews for two. They worked on that shot. Basket. Excuse me, Frank. They worked on that shot all day yesterday. Scott Thompson wants Tory Andrews shooting from right there at the top of the key. Eight-point Texas Tech lead with five and a half minutes to play before halftime. Damone Ashley, his, oh, I started to say his third in a row. That one was down there and came out. Get it along to the Red Raiders. 38 or 39 31 rice trading by eight and the ball will belong to the texas tech red raiders that's used back in the ball game we'll throw it in well, rice is really mix, mixing up their defenses almost every time down the floor they're running a lot of the one three one but a while ago they ran a one a one two two and then they switched to a man-to-man -man also so they're giving texas tech lots of looks alan ash uh, alan austin back in the ball game for the texas tech red raiders this is hughes Still against that Rice zone. Rice has refused to come out of it, despite the fact that Tech has hit seven three-pointers here in the first half. Here's Lance Hughes. Guarded by Adam Peaks. Inside to Flemings, intercepted by Dana Hardy. Five minutes exactly to play in the first half. 39-31, Tech. Jump stop, Hardy. Yes. Hardy gets his second basket today. Dana Hardy can do it all. He's the career leader in assists, season se single season leader in assists, and he also can score. You know, we haven't mentioned the fact that Rice is on spring break. So that's one of the reasons we don't have a, a, a bigger crowd here at Autry Court. There's the pass into Clemens intercepted, and Tory Andrews away on a two-on-four break. Let's see how he handles it. Didn't handle it very well, except Scott got the rebound. But Chad Collins was in there to take it away from him, and Tech wound up with the ball. So Rice really misplayed the fast break that time, I think. Well, the fans are mad and they want a foul. Brent Scott should have never brought the ball down to Chad Collins' level. Once he did, a little guard ought to just eat that ball up. Here's Rice in the man-to-man. -man. Ten inches taller. Yeah, you're right. They dropped the zone. 4-12 to play. 39-33. Tech by six. That's Alan Austin. This is Stacy Bailey. Remember, Tech has hit seven three-pointers here in the first half. Look for Will Flemings to step out and get the ball out away from the basket a little. Alan Austin missing and Flemings grabbing another rebound. Interesting in that Flemons and, and uh, the big fella Brent Scott were the rebounding champions in the league the last couple of years. Here's the turnover. Tory Andrews coming up with it. As a freshman, Flemons won it. And as a sophomore last year, Brent Scott won the rebounding championship. Scott to Tory Andrews, who powers it up. Rebounded by Will Flemons. Flemons averaging 10 rebounds a ball game this year, and Scott eight and a half. Red Raiders another three-pointer. That's their eighth of the first half. That one by Yesu Lance Hughes. That's the tough thing about switching defenses. That time, I'm not sure Rice knew what they were in, and as a result, Lance Hughes was standing out there by himself. That's eight three-pointers for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Behind the Scott screen, Hardy tries to apply, doesn't get it, and Flemings grabs another rebound. 42-33, nine-point Tech lead. Stacey Bailey, Will Flemings working on Scott. Bailey for three. Air ball pulled down by Marvin Moore, who's been a little quiet lately. Uh-oh, almost dribbled it off his knee. Moore a little out of control. Takes it down low to Brent Scott, who puts it up and didn't get it. Clemens grabs yet another rebound. Clemens has been a terror on those defensive boards. Well, that's a great example. Will Clemens hadn't fouled out of a game all year. Nice coast-to-coast -coast move by Stacey Bailey. We talked about him not falling out, fouling out, and that's because he uses his long arm so well. That time Brent Scott had position, and uh, Will Clemens was just there with his arms straight up in the air. I want you to go to the locker room at halftime and ask Will Flemings his sleeve leg. <laughs> I got to believe it's at least a 38, maybe a 40. Pass to, to Tory Andrews. Rice trying to get back into it. They're down by 11 now with 2.20 to play. Hardy, Adam Peaks. 18 seconds to shoot. Uh oh, we got a foul down low, and it's on Alan Austin picking up his second. 
So the one thing the Raiders have not done is control their personal fouls. They've committed a total of three, five, six, nine now here in the first half. The early intensity really seems to have taken its toll. I'm about to say they look tired. Also look over the bench, and here come wholesale substitutions. Lots of subs. They came out and they were playing so hard that, that there's a natural letdown at this point in the game. You know, if you just come there, you watch Adam Peaks. Now, if you just come down and watch these two coaches coach, what fun it is to watch these two young 37-year-old coaches. James Dickey, there he is. He's so intense, and, and what a nice guy besides that. Always makes it a point to come out and say hello to you before the game is, gets underway. Missing the free throw is Tori Andrews. The Owls get it, put it back, Brent Scott. Andrews misses the free throw. Brent Scott got it, put it back, and was fouled. That is the 10th point of the ball game for Brent Scott. Stay tuned for our halftime, and Reed and I will be giving you this week's Norwegian Cruise Line trivia contest question, and also the answer to last week's, qu last week's question. That foul a moment ago for the Red Raiders was on Lance Hughes, his first. Did Scott make the free throw? No, he missed it, and Will Clemens is getting a breather, a well-needed one. 44-35. Here's an easy shot put up and in by ooh, Lance Hughes, and he got stepped on under the basket, too. That is his fourth basket today. Well, that's that transition we were talking about. Tech's going to have to get back, and they're going to have to turn around and, and run, as they run down the court, run backwards so you see the ball. That's Scott Tynes that made that basket. Here is an inside pass to Lamont Dale. Threw it away. Marvin Moore on the breakaway. It's a two-on-three situation. Moore takes it inside, gives it instead to Dana Hardy, pumps it for three. Yes. Hardy and Rice has its fifth three-pointer. We've got 12 three-point baskets in the first half of the ballgame. Seven for Tech, five for Rice. Dana Hart is shooting 41 from the field for the year and 40 from the three-point line. So he is a, he is a great three-point shooter. Well, we'll check the record book at the halftime to see what the conference record is. I think it's 11. I'm not sure, but I believe the team record is 11 for a number of three-pointers in a game. And already, Texas Tech has seven. Rice has five. Brian Moore. Clock is down under a minute now. 46-40. Now by uh, Ryan, Texas Tech by six. Hughes. Lamont Dale. Nine seconds to shoot. Eight seconds to shoot. Seven to shoot. Shot clock at four. Lance Hughes pumps it for another three-pointer. Lance Hughes hits the eighth three-pointer of the first half for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. His third of the first half as well. Well, they are shooting the lights out of that three-point line. 49-40 with 33 seconds to play in the first half. Rice has eight, or rather Texas Tech has eight first half three-point baskets. One shot, 49-40. Tech's going to go to the halftime leading, but the question is by how many? Will it be nine or will it be seven or six? Clock is, that's the big clock you see, running, of course, for the hundreds of seconds. Kind of reminds you of a track meet, doesn't it? Here's Tori Andrews for two. There's going to be five seconds. Tech might get another basket here. Lamont Dale going inside with one second left. Brad Dale puts it up and got it at the buzzer. It's going to count. Brad Dale, that one's going to count at the buzzer for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. So the basket by Dale will count, and the Red Raiders will lead at the end of the first half, 51-40. Let's look at it again. Great hustle by Brad Dale. A tendency when a guy's going down like that is just to stop and see if it goes in or not. Brad Dale heads up, hustles down the ball, shoots a nice little soft jump hook, and sticks the ball in the hole to give great momentum to Tech going in. Well, sir, it's a 51-40 lead for the Texas Tech Red Raiders over the Rice Owls. We've got 15 minutes to wait until it starts again. We'll be right back. Day on, every Domino's pizza will be better than ever. Fresh made Domino's pizza better than ever now and forever. Try a medium with unlimited toppings now just $9.99. We asked California artist Ed Lister to give us his impressions of the all new 1992 Buick Skylark to capture the lyrical lines, the liquid flow, the dash of flair. And above all, the quality that makes this the Buick of its class. Did he capture Skylark? Decide for yourself. But one thing's for certain. Skylark is the Buick that will change a lot of impressions about Buick. Diet Dr. Pepper tastes more like regular Dr. Pepper. When you want one, 
there's no stopping the taste. With 100% NutraSweet. Well, the Texas Tech Red Raiders are within five of the Southwest Conference record for the most three-point field goals in any game. We'll tell you more about that when we come back with the uh, Red Raiders leading by a score of 51-40 to 40 over the Rice Owls at Autry Court on the campus of the Rice Owls. 51-40, Texas Tech. Southwest Conference basketball is brought to you by... Buick. By Norwegian Cruise Line. By True Value Hardware. By Schlitz Malt Liquor. And by Domino's Pizza. You call Domino's now, you'll be enjoying our new better than ever pizza during the second half. Smooth operator is together naturally. He knows Schlitz Malt Liquor means quality. Everybody checks him out when he's on the scene. He's got quality taste, you know what I mean. The quality alone is not the groove. Along with it, he's got mellow and smooth. A deaf combo of the originator is known to all as smooth operator. But when you're after the best, don't settle for less. No one does it like a smooth operator. No one does it like the bull. Shit, smoke, look up, After making it on Broadway, it, some of the finest entertainers around go off-Broadway. They appear on Norwegian Cruise Line. No other cruise line offers such entertainment. Norwegian Cruise Line, the best vacation you've ever had. Plus... With the introduction of the 1992 LeSabre, Buick's reputation continues to grow. And it pleases us that people are taking notice. Because LeSabre isn't just another fine motor car, it's a Buick. And Buick is rapidly becoming an enormous symbol for quality in America. I'll take the special. I'll take the special. I'll take the special. And you should, too. The monthly specials at True Value Hardware Store. Like the Master Electrician Rechargeable Lantern for just $8.99. It recharges right in the outlet. And in February, it's just $8.99 while supplies last. That's just one of the terrific specials at True Value. The neighborhood hardware stores with national chain store buying power. I'll take the special. I've always been interested in science, biology, chemistry, physics. They were all fascinating. In college, I discovered ways to apply the pure sciences to medicine, exploring new ways to help the body repair itself. The Texas Tech Health Sciences Center has introduced me to a whole new world of opportunity. Let's meet today's Raycom Southwest Conference Classroom Champion. I have to admit, I never thought I would be here, especially competing against Rice uh, people. I don't think that um, I've done that good of a job, but um, it's a great honor. There are so many talented people at Rice. It, it's just a privilege to, to be able to, um, to succeed athletically and academically. It's given me a lot of pleasure in my four years. The Road to Reunion. Catch all the action as the 1992 Southwest Conference Postseason Classic arrives in Dallas March 13th through the 15th. 
Good seats available now. Call the Southwest Conference Ticket Hotline. 1-800-800-SWC8. Then press zero for tournament tickets. Okay, we're at halftime with the Texas Tech Red Raiders leading the Rice Owls by a score of 51-40. It's been raining three-pointers here for the Red Raiders. They've hit 10 of them in the first half alone. What do you think about this big guy, Flemons? We measured him instantly, had the Texas Tech guys measure him in the locker room. He's 47 inches from the middle of his back to the end of his sleeve. Well, I bet he wondered what that Raycom did. The guy was doing running in there with a tape measure saying, hold your arms out, hold your arms out. <laughs> Let's take a look at him in action. Here he is right here using those long arms, calling for the ball well, and he really was on fire early. Had a bunch of points early, has 14 in half. Rice did do a good job later on of, of doubling up on him and shutting him down a little bit. And here's Rice's big man answering back with a power move of his own. Briscott did a great job of holding off the defense and goes up strong to the bucket. At 250 pounds, when he goes up, he goes strong. That was a gorilla dunk. It sure was. Now let's take a look at Damone Ashley and what Tech did best in the first half. Rained some three-pointers as he hit one of their ten three-point shots. Well, he came in with a lot of confidence, and he hadn't been shooting well and didn't even play in the last game. And came in really putting up the three, hit two, had one that was in there deep and bounced back out. So he came off the bench with a lot of aggression and was also confident, which is unusual to be in a slump that he's in. How you account for one team beating the other team by 11 on their home floor after they lost and by the 15 Lakers at home. Well, ball. James Dickey said all year long, if we want to win, we're not going to out-talent people. we got to play with emotion. we got to play hard, and they're playing hard today. 51-40 is our halftime score. Texas Tech leading the Rice Owls. 20 more minutes of action coming up on Raycom, so stay with us. We'll be right back. It's time for Southwest Airlines' Friends Fly Free Sale again. Wake up and smell the coffee. And people are friendlier than ever. Just make reservations at least a day in advance and buy your round-trip ticket at our regular low unrestricted fare and a friend flies with you. Free. And now, fly through May 21st. Yo, Dad, what do you think? I've been, neighbor old buddy. I'm driving. Southwest Airlines' Friends Fly Free Sale. Because a friend in need is, well, a friend in need. You gotta be kidding. Woo. What's in is out, what's out is in. So many trends make my poor head spin. Don't tell me good taste, I know I taste good. While the best thing though is so misunderstood. Just give me what the doctor ordered. Just what the doctor ordered. Just give me a doctor. Did you know the cost of two nine-page fax transmissions from these Philadelphia newspapers to Chicago may surprise you? I got an exclusive interview. With AT&T Pro Watts, your business can't get a more accurate way to send a fax. She talks a lot. And our prices are extremely competitive. Even though the other company would like you to believe, they always save you lots of money. Wait a minute. That's news to me. Can I quote you on that? AT&T Pro Watts, another AT&T advantage. A nation's business is a nation's strength. And the strength of a bank called Nations Bank, a bank that now has over 2,000 locations to provide even the smallest business access to the largest resources. A bank that measures its strength by the strength of every business it serves, from Baltimore to Miami to El Paso. It's no wonder a bank that grew strong with a nation's business would today be called Nations Bank. How about those old commercials? Things have really changed since then. But you know, some things never change. At Brake Check, we've been doing it right since 1968. Today, we just do it better. Brakes, shocks, steering, struts, alignment, lifetime warranties, we do it all better at a price that's better. What makes Brake Check number one? Doing it right and doing it better for you. Entered last week, our question was, which SWC school has not won the conference championship since 1951? The correct answer, Baylor. Our lucky winner this week is Diana Nance from Houston, who's won a cruise for two on Norwegian Cruise Line. And we'll return to Autry Court after these messages from your local station. This is the Raycom Network. Yeah, we know. 
It's going to be another one of those weekends where things are getting out of hand at Arsenio's. With Luke Perry, Beverly Hills 90210's hottest heart drop, and making an unusual, hilarious visit, everybody's perfect stranger, Bronson Pinchot. Then, back in full force, singer-songwriter Kenny Loggins gives us his latest conviction of the heart. So if you can hang with the wild ones, watch the Arsenio Hall Weekend Jam. Sunday night at 11 on KBVO Fox 42. Stricken with total amnesia. I don't know who any of you are. I don't even remember who I am. The crew struggle to find their true identities. You and I could be married. And discover they're in the midst of an alien war. We've been ordered to cross into Lysian territory and destroy their central command. There could be thousands of lives at stake. On an all-new episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. Tonight at 6 on KBVO Fox 42. Sunday, the Fox Summer Games continue with a one-hour hidden video summer special. First, we're hitting the beach to nail unsuspecting victims with a sneaky drinking fountain. <laughs> then, hit the fairways with golf cops. Pull your cart over, please, sir. When lawless golfers run amok. You know how to play patty cake. That's when these guys tee off. Patty cake, patty cake, baker's mint, bake and cake as fast as you can. Golf cops. He's drunk. Sunday night at 6 on KBVO Fox 42. Okay, let's take a look at our Dr. Pepper roundup with some other basketball action around the country. In the Big Ten, Michigan leading Northwestern. No surprise there. In the ACC, Georgia Tech over Virginia. Virginia perhaps celebrating that victory over North Carolina. And UNC Charlotte losing to Virginia Commonwealth by five. That game at the end of the first half. Around the Southwest Conference this afternoon and tonight. Coming up is the second part of our doubleheader here on Raycom will be Texas and SMU. That from Moody Coliseum at 2 o'clock. Texas A&M is tonight in Kansas City where they will play the University of Missouri at Kansas City. And at 7.35 tonight, a battle between the IBAs, TCU and Baylor at 7.35 at the Farrell Center in Waco. Our halftime score is 51-40 with the Texas Tech Red Raiders leading the Rice Owls on their Owls home floor by 11 points. The Naismith Award is given annually to the nation's top college basketball player. And here are some of this year's contenders. We'll keep you updated on the top Naismith candidates throughout the season. And you can watch the Naismith Awards in April on Raycom. Now for a look at a previous Naismith Award winner. Domino's Pizza presents Naismith Award winners. After Lou Alcindor dominated college basketball in the late 60s, it hardly seemed fair that John Wooden's UCLA Bruins would have another great center. But Bill Walton was a more than worthy successor, surpassing Alcindor to become the leading rebounder in UCLA history. That was just one of the many reasons Walton and the Bruins continued to dominate the NCAA and that Walton became the first three-time Naismith Award winner in 1972, 73, and 74. Because Southwest Airlines has more flights a day than other airlines, if you miss one, you can probably catch the next one. Or the next one. Or the next one. Southwest Airlines will save you time and money. Because most of Southwest Airlines flights are short, we serve snacks. Which saves you money because you don't pay for an airline meal. Or anything associated with an airline meal. Southwest Airlines will save you time and money. From this day on, every Domino's pizza will be better than ever. More melted cheese, big better toppings, tender, tastier crust. More melted cheese, big better toppings, tender, tastier crust. Every fresh made Domino's pizza better than ever, now and forever. Nobody knows, like Domino's, how you like More melted cheese, big better toppings, tender, tastier crust. Try a medium with unlimited toppings, now just $9.99. Gillette presents Sensor, the system, the technology that will change the way you shave forever. Sensor, twin blades set on springs to read your face and respond. Independent suspension to sense and adjust to every curve of your face. 
no other razor comes close. Gillette Sensor, for the best shave a man can get. What do I do for a living? It's pretty simple. I'm a painter. And a locksmith. I'm a gardener. A plumber. And your interior decorator. I'm a carpenter. An electrician. And a troubleshooter. What do I do for a living? I own a True Value Hardware Store. You can do it with True Value Hardware Stores. Southwest Conference Basketball is being brought to you by Dr. Pepper. By Ford and your Ford dealers. By True Value Hardware. By AT&T. By Miller Lite. And by Domino's Pizza. If you call Domino's now, you'll be enjoying our new pizza with more melted cheese, bigger, better toppings, and a tender, tastier crust. Now let's take a look at today's Gillette halftime stats. And boy, those field goals don't show the fact that Texas Tech has hit nine of them out of 16 attempts in the first half, Reed. They, they are really filling it up on the three-point line. Nine of 16. 16 attempts is amazing, but nine makes is really, that's some great shooting. And Rice was not bad. Four out of seven, they just haven't hit as many of them. That's right. Well, we've got a 51-40 Texas Tech lead. As far as the individual scores, individual scoring leaders are concerned, Clemens has 14, Lance Hughes has 13, and Bailey, Stacy Bailey has eight for the uh, Texas Tech Red Raiders. Brent Scott has 10, and Dana Hardy has eight to lead the Rice Owls in scoring. So we're ready to go in a game that has had a lead change on seven different occasions and has been tied on five others in the first half of the ballgame. Uh, Adam Peaks puts it up there and misses it. Seven lead changes and five ties in the first half alone and a 51-40 lead. And a very quick foul. That was a good job of Adam Peaks of staying with his ball. He pump fake and pump fake was trying to get Will Flemings off the ground and couldn't get him off. Went up with a shot and missed it but stayed with it. Got the rebound and drew a foul. That's the foul on Lance Hughes. Dana Hardy with the basket for the Rice Owls. And that cuts into that lead. It is now 51-43 for Dana Hardy. That's a total of eight points. This is Lance Hughes, who was three for three from three-point land in the first half. Texas Tech earlier this year sank 15 three-pointers against Houston Baptist, and that tied the conference record set by Texas against LSU a couple of years ago. They have nine right now. Here's Andrews with the rebound. 51-43, Texas Tech with an eight-point lead. First time, here's Moore spaking the three. First time these two teams met in Lubbock, Rice won by 15, so how do you account for that? Texas did a really good job of controlling the wings. They're denying the passes, and yet I, I can only remember once they got beat on a back door, and I really thought the Tech was going to be wide open to that, but they've done a good job of being in control right out there, right there on the floor. Reed, do you see any change at all in Tech's defense in this uh, opening moments of the second half? Staying in the same man-to-man, -man and, they, and there's no mystery what they're going to do. They're going to come out and say, hey, look, we're going to get up in your face, and you're going to have to beat us. Hardy pumped for the three, didn't get it. Rice rebounded, or a, a Tech rebounded, and Lamont Dale comes back and gets his third basket of the day. Boy, the huge shooting percentage have been tremendous. First half alone, it was 58% for Texas Tech, 44% for Rice. Lamont Dale hustled down after hitting that nice shot and tried to draw a charge, but that's the same thing that they got beat on two or three times before. After the ball goes through the hoop, Rice isn't gonna, isn't gonna mess around trying to figure out who grabs the ball and who inbounds it. They're gonna get it inbounds and up the floor quick. We're gonna see Kenneth Rourke checking the ball game for Rice. Kenneth is the 6'10", 235-pound senior three-letter man from Tulsa who really played well in Rice's most recent outing. He's a fine player. It's, it's interesting, Marvin Moore's number one in the conference in free throw percentage, but Kenneth Rourke's actually shooting a better percentage, just hadn't attempted very many. He's only attempted 30 free throws in 25 games. So for a big fella, that's not many free throws. Here's Long Sox Hardy. Marvin Moore, 53-43, Tech by 10, just underway in the second half, two minutes deep. Tory Andrews, the sophomore from New Orleans, gets his ne next basket. Tory Andrews has such pretty extension on his shot. He gets the ball way up above his head when he releases it. Eight points for Tory Andrews. 53-45, eight-point lead. Rice in that 1-3-1 one, one zone. Brent Scott on the bench right now. Not in foul difficulty. Just counseled with uh, Coach Scott Thompson. 
Dana Hardy's doing a good job, and he has to work hard on the backside of that 1-3-1. Watch him, he has to stay even with the ball down there, and then he has to, his responsibility is corner to corner. So on the long passes, like right here, Dana Hardy's got to be back over here to cut off that shot. Lamont Dale gets into the basket. He has both of Texas Tech's first two baskets of the second half. There's the no, scot, the no sock look. He's got, if he's got anklets on, he's got tape up around them. I'm not sure whether he wears socks or not. That's got to be a little uncomfortable if he does. That doesn't. would drive me crazy. It is a 55-45 Texas Tech lead. They led by 11 at the half. Marvin Moore open when Dale stumbled and fell, and Marvin Moore gets a three-pointer. Good screen by Kenneth Ward. Did a good job of setting the screen, and, and Marvin Moore did a good job of stepping behind the screen and hitting that jump shot. That's 14 combined three-pointers by these two teams. Nine for Tech, five for Rice. 55-48. Clemens fouled, I believe, by Hardy. That'll be three on Hardy, and he becomes the first player on either team now to pick up three fouls, if indeed the foul was on him. Yep, it is. So Dana Hardy, the starting senior guard for the Owls, becomes the first player to pick up three fouls. That could be significant. It sure could. It, with 17 minutes to go, it's interesting. Scott Thompson says, hey, look, let's go ahead and play a while and see if we can keep hey, it from going four. Boy, what fun it is to watch these two coaches, James Dickey and Scott Thompson. Thompson. Both 37 years old, both full of energy, both have their own unique coaching styles, but they're really a lot of fun to watch. And they're great guys besides. Frank, I think the ref ended up giving that foul to Rourke instead of Hardy. So that, that explains why Scott Thompson didn't make a move to get him out. You're right. So that's still only two fouls on Hardy. First one on Rourke. 55-48. Tech still by seven. Skip pass to Lance Hughes. When you throw that skip pass, it really messes up a matchup zone because you have rules, but that's a tough adjustment to make. Lamont Dale gets another three, and Tech has ten three-pointers in the ballgame. Dale has all three of Rice's uh, Tech's baskets here in the second half. Dale started the half with five points. He now has an additional seven. Nice pass inside. There's Rourke. Marvin Moore. 16-20 to play. 58-48. Tech maintaining a 10-point lead. Marvin Moore for three. Didn't go. Rourke almost had the rebound. Out of bounds. Here they be. Lincoln Weber tells us that the ball will belong to the right side. There you look at James Dickey as he was talking very briefly to Phil uh, Andrews, his uh, assistant coach. Phil, 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 actually, Wallace, Phil Wallace actually played for Tech Tech under Gerald Myers, got into the banking profession, and when Dickey got the job, he talked to Phil and he said, hey, look, you know, you're young, you're energetic, you've got a great mind for basketball, come coach with me, and Phil jumped all over it. Big B is back in the ball game. Big Brent Scott of the Rice House. Nice play by Brent Moore. Did he save it? No, Rice came up with a loose ball. Marvin Moore for three. Run down nicely by Rourke. 58-48, still a Tech lead. 16 minutes to play in the ball game. Rice comes into the game at five and four in conference play. Tech is four and six. Marvin Moore for three. Nope. Battle for the rebound, and Clemens comes out of there with it. Clemens had five rebounds in the first half. He's got six. Lance Hughes behind him to Stacy Bailey for three. Way short. Rebound by Lance Hughes. Boy, he can sky. Can he get up there for a six-four skinny guy? Stacy Bailey checked in with his arm cocked again. Give me the ball, and I'm going to let it fly. He did again. Didn't get it. And Hughes came down with the rebound. How does that little guy do it? And got the basket and was fouled. Lance Hughes has been on fire. He sure has. He was five of six in the first half and three of three from the three-point line. So we talked so much about Will Flemings. I didn't even notice how well Lance Hughes was playing. Watch how well he hustles after this ball. Great, great determination and great uh, ability to anticipate where the ball is going. He's the, only, he's the only Red Raider down there, one on three, gets the ball and goes back up strong. Outstanding play by Lance Hughes. Well, now that foul was on Dana Hardy, so he does have three now. So Hughes will be trying to make the three-point play out of it. And Dana Hardy has picked up his third foul. The Rice senior guard becomes the first player with three fouls. That's two against Rice in the half. And Damone Ashley is back in the ballgame for the Red Raiders, replacing Lamont Dale. Lance Hughes at the free throw line. Again, these are the two best free throw shooting teams in the league. Rice first and Rice and Texas Tech second. So the three-point play by Lance Hughes puts Texas Tech up 61 to 48. 15-31 to go. For the Fergusons, just going to the store can be quite an adventure. incredibly civilized Ford Explorer. The overwhelming choice of explorers everywhere. You gotta be kidding. What's in is out, what's out is in. So many trends make my poor head spin. Don't tell me good days, but I know I taste good. Wow, the best things always so miss. 
That's it, and that's that. It's it, and that's that. It's it, and that's that. Nothing beats it. You want the bar across the street. <laughs> Life's the great beer that's less filling. It's everything you want a beer to be. Okay, the Texas Longhorns and the SMU Mustangs will be following this as Bob Ortigal and Dave Barnett are in Dallas at Moody Coliseum standing by for that one. And that, of course, will come up at 2 o'clock or just as soon as our game is over from here at the uh, three court. And don't forget that Southwest Conference tournament tickets are available. The Southwest Conference postseason tournament, Classic 17, March 13th through the 15th at Reunion Arena. Lots of good seats still available. If you want tickets, call 1-800-800-SWC-8. Monday through Friday, and in Dallas, dial 637 Hoop. Ticket packages are $60 or $80. The Southwest Conference Classic 17. All right, here are the Rice Owls. Hardy playing with three fouls. There's Sam Campbell, and Campbell hits a two pointer. It's almost as if the folks are disappointed when it's not a three pointer now. <laughs> Whistle and a foul on the floor on Sam Campbell of the Rice Owls. That was a hustling mistake, but that's a tough, in a matchup zone, the toughest thing is when you've got two guards up front and then just there where Will Fleming stepped up to the top of the key, suddenly you got three guys flooding a zone and you don't know whether to go ahead and bring the big guy up or what, and Sam Campbell was out of position and just took a slap at the ball. 15 minutes to play, 61-50. That 11-point advantage that Tech had at the half is still with them. They're up by 11 right now. Fleming's working on Scott. Fleming's, whom they say that we measured him at 47 inches from the middle of his neck to the tip of his arm at halftime. Now, Fett's not getting the information for you. I wonder who did that. Here's Flemons wheeling around Rourke and shooting from 18 feet and missing it, and Dana Hardy rebounding. Rice with a chance to cut the lead. Scott Times on a floating running one hand, one hander, and it's an air ball pulled down by Brian Moore. They've got the numbers, three on two. Let's see what he does with it. Shoots it ahead to Lance Hughes, and it's out of bounds off of Rice. It'll belong to Tech. The toughest pass to catch in basketball is on a fast break bounce pass. So often people go, ooh, pretty pat. Whoops, out of bounds. It is tough to be on a dead run and count the, catch a bounce pass like that. Just then Lance Hughes looked at, looked at Brian Moore and said, hey, throw it up there by the rim. I'll go get it. Toss it up there to me. Well, Tech had the numbers. They had three on two, but they just didn't handle it real well. Hughes will be throwing it in. Incidentally, we talked about that blue curtain. Next week, or on Thursday, I believe it is, March the 5th, when Texas comes to town, they're expecting a crowd of 5,600 here. They'll separate that curtain, and they'll put fans in that end zone down there. First time I've ever seen that. That'll be on March the 5th. Damone Ashley, boy, he has a pretty four. Missing it, and Tides grab the rebound. Ten three-pointers for Texas Tech, five for Rice so far in the ballgame. Big B, Brent Scott, back outside to Dana Hardy. Sam Campbell. Still an 11 point lead, same as it was at halftime for Texas Tech, and we played almost six minutes of the first second half. And there's been no change in that 11 point advantage for the Red Raiders. Threw it over the head of Brent Scott, and a pushing foul on Dell. There was a tacky foul. Questionable call. Lincoln Weber called that one. I don't know whether that was really a foul or not. As much as those two guys have been mixing it up, that's an awful tacky yeah, foul to no, call. No, no foul there. Lincoln missed that one, no doubt about it. There's James Dickey. Just no foul on that play. When you're going to let them bang and push on each other and then call a little arm contact, I think that's wrong. That's right. It, there's no, there's nothing wrong with making that call if you've been making that call the whole game, but don't suddenly start making it. Rourke hits a two-pointer for the Rice Owls. That foul, incidentally, a moment ago was the second on Fleming, and Rourke comes back with a two-pointer for the Rice Owls. 61-52, nine-point lead, 13-46 to play. Demo and Bailey, oh, there's the 11th three-pointer for the Rice for the Red Raiders, and Bailey has three of them. Well, Ashley, I'm sorry, Damone Ashley. I'm glad I started getting his right, his first name right anyway. <laughs> He's going to hit three-pointers. I better call him Damone. Damone Ashley, not Stacy Baylor, with three three-pointers for the uh, Red Raiders. 64-52, 13-55 to go. Red Raiders by 12. Campbell, nice move, good dump to Rourke, and then he lost it. And now Stigliano calls a foul on somebody. I believe it's on uh, Brian Moore. No, it's not on Moore. It's on... 
22, Stacy Bailey. That's four fouls against the uh, Red Raiders here in the second half. Frank, Brett Scott's really looking tired. He's working awful hard to get the ball. He hadn't gotten too many passes down low, and he looks tired out there. Well, I'll tell you what, Flemings keeps you busy, doesn't he? He sure does. Flemings with a good switch, picking up Dana Hardy, but Hardy gets the basket down the left. That is the uh, fourth basket of the ball game, and the second this half for Dana Hardy, who has 10 points. 10 point, Rice, uh, Texas Tech lead, traveling, traveling call. There's the threes, every one of them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them. There are ten up, there should be ten of them up there for Texas Tech. Ten threes for Texas Tech. But we're at off the court, so why should they be doing that? I can't figure that out. Because that's some folks in line. I wouldn't think so. If so, they, they ran out of red magic markers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll buy that. 64-54, exactly 13 minutes to play. Texas Tech has led virtually the entire ball game. We had seven lead changes in the first half, five ties, but not in this half. Campbell. Ball retained by Bryant Moore, who took it away from Kenneth Roy. Moore dribbling. Lamont Dale, yes, wide open. Texas Tech continues to shoot the eyes out of it. Lamont Dale has four baskets in the second half alone and has a total of 14 points, nine of them here in the second half. Let's watch inside. Scott Thompson just almost came out of his loafers that last time down the floor wanting to foul. I don't know whether he's trying to fire his team up or if there was really something that was that, was that objectionable. Now, remember, Scott has been known to rip those pants. Remember when that happened to him about two or three years ago? He <laughs> leaped up in protest or in celebration and came down with a ripped pair of pants. What do you do then? Do you, do you ask for a towel over on the sideline? I don't know what you do. I, I really don't know. I guess you hope you wore a long pair of shorts before you came to the game, huh? You hope you, you don't have on your Valentine boxers your wife gave you. That's right. At the free throw line, Sam Campbell. That is his fourth point of the day. 6'2", 180-pound sophomore out of Austin Reagan High School. The teams have really been playing hard, and if you look at the record, say, hey, these are two middle of the pack teams. But this game's very, very important for the standings as far as the seedings for the Southwest Conference Tournament. I think uh, we just got another foul call. I'm not sure what, who it's on. Will Clemens, that'll be his third. Boy, there have been two kind of kind of soft fouls called a moment ago by Lincoln Weber on, uh, on Will Clemens. And Clemens has three, so he and Hardy now become the only two players with three fouls. Brent Scott's shot partially blocked by Will Clemens. And look at Clemens run the floor. He's already down at the other end. Blocked the shot, Wade, and was already at the other end to take the layup and put it in. Now, how can a guy do more than that? You call that right down the line. Hustling down the floor. Great block shot. He goes to underneath. He's underneath the basket. Look how, again. look how far underneath the basket is when he blocks this shot. Now, look where he is in position to everyone else on the floor. And he's the first man down the floor. That's hustling. He's already out of your picture, under the basket, waiting for the pass. Gets great Gets position it. right there on a back cut, turns around and goes strong to the hole. And it picks up the foul on Brett Scott, which incidentally is his first of the day. Watch what he does right there. He puts his hand on the backboard. That's what, if your big man isn't going to go up and doesn't have a clean dunk, that's what you want to do to make a strong move. That leaves no room for the defense to get their hand in there to block that shot. The only thing Brent Scott can do is let him score or foul him. Clemens is four out of four at the stripe, has a total now of 20, and let's see, has uh, 18 points for the afternoon. And he's going to take a bit of a rest with his three fouls. Largest lead of the game for Tech. They lead by 14 with 12-11 to play. And here is Robert Blaze in the lineup now, a 6'8 freshman, number 44, and here's a steal, and the Raiders have got three off four. Ryan Moore pulls up, 15-footer goes. Everything happening for the Red Raiders right now that's going well. 55 for Rice, 71 for Texas Tech. So apparently Tech is trying to do unto others as they had done unto them out at uh, Lubbock. They're, they're playing such good basketball right now, and it's a good time to peak and a good time to be playing well with the tournament coming up. Damone Ashley picks up his third foul. That is team foul number six against the uh, Red Raiders. It'll be a two-shot foul for Kenneth Roy. I guess that was a crazy thing to say. It's always good to be playing well, but especially now. now they, they've been a young team. They've been in such a transition, not only with new faces, but a completely new philosophy and offense. It, and now they're just now starting to peak. And you talk about peaking, well, what that means is, well, they're winning some games. That was an interesting stat that we saw there in Kenneth Roy. He's playing in his 112th game as a Rice Al, most by any Rice player ever. I believe he erased Bobby Tudor's record in that, but Dana Hardy has played more minutes. Hardy, I think, has played in 109 games, but he's played more minutes than any other player in Rice history. 
Well, Kenneth Warwick's broken the 1,000-point mark. He's fourth or fifth in the all-time rebounding list. He's had a great career here at Rice. The one criticism I have of Kenneth is that I know Scott Thompson wants him to be more physical. He's such a, he's such a great free throw shooter that he needs to go to the line more often. Big, heavy-legged guy, too, at 6'10 and 235. We've got a timeout, 71-57. Tech by 14 with 11.44 still to go. Because Southwest Airlines has so many daily flights, this is the kind of sophisticated equipment that helps keep us on schedule. So is this. Southwest Airlines will save you time and money. At Southwest Airlines, we have the newest pure jet fleet in the airline industry. In fact, our fleet of Boeing 737s averages just six years of age, just like some of our favorite customers. Southwest Airlines, the youngest fleet in the air. entertainers around go off-Broadway. They appear on Norwegian Cruise Line. No other cruise line offers such entertainment. Norwegian Cruise Line, the best vacation you've ever had. Plus... Frank Fallon back with Reed Geddes at Autry Court. And uh, you said during the timeout you expected to see Rice put the press on, huh, Reed? They need to go to some type of full court pressure. There's still a 14-point differential, and they're not making up any, any ground. They're, they're shooting the ball well, and they're scoring, but so is Texas Tech. They need to do something different. Brad Dale is in the ballgame now for Texas Tech. Don't forget, we'll be selecting the Southwest Airlines player of the game at the conclusion of today's telecast. So stay tuned, and sure enough, they are in a full court man-to-man -man press. Well, let's see, is this a 2-1-2 two, two, or is it a full court man-to-man? -man? It looks like a full court man-to-man. -man. It's hard. It was hard to tell that time down the floor. Well, Lamont Dale beats it to the basket and scores quickly, and the Texas Tech Red Raiders get another basket from Lamont Dale. And that's what you have to do against a press. No matter what the point in the game you are, if they're pressing you, you've got to punish them for it. That's five baskets in the second half for Lamont Dale. Marvin Moore's shot spins out of there. Adam Pinks, however, does get it back into the foul. The basket's going to count. Adam Pinks gets the basket. Let's see who the foul is on. Tony Stegliano will tell us. I think he said number three, Chad Collins. No, it's Lamont Dale. Adam Peaks has done a good job all day on the board. He's been there fighting and hustling, and he grabs the ball, and he goes up strong. This time he's not worried about getting his shot blocked. He said, hey, I'm going up strong, sticks the ball in the hole. Excellent job by the freshman. That is the seventh foul. Will Flemons back in the ballgame. That's the seventh foul against Texas Tech. So just as they did in the first half, uh, Reed with 11-16 to go. Rice gets into the one-and-one, one. although here, of course, Peaks will be shooting only one, trying to complete the three-point play. But they are with 11 minutes and 16 seconds to go in the one and one. That's to Rice's big advantage. I was really impressed with the way Lamont Dale went ahead and took it through on the press. When I was talking about punishing a team for pressing you, the last thing you want to do is let a team press you full court, break the press, and then get down here and stop and let them all run down and set up again. If you break the press, go ahead and take it through. Adam Peaks makes the free throw. Rice incidentally has missed only two free throws, all three free throws all afternoon long. Back in the ball game for the Owls, number 21, Tori Andrews, the 6'5 sophomore from New Orleans. 73 to 60 is the score. It's a man-to-man -man press. Lamont Dale, double team. Tech breaks the press without any real difficulty. Brian Moore, 13-point lead for Texas Tech with the clock down to 11 minutes to play. Match Hughes. But they're just playing a four out, one in. They got four guys on the perimeter and they're letting Will Flemons run around inside and try to get a post up move. Lamont Dale, a strong 6-3 forward, takes it to the hoop, didn't get the basket, and the foul is called on the floor and it sees Peaks and Lamont Dale that may have the collision. Boy, I was holding my breath on that. I thought Adam Peaks just ruined a knee. Player, tech player fell against him and he bent back under him and I really thought he got hurt. That's good to see. Watch how hard someone comes down on Adam Peaks' knee right here. Oh, boy, that hurts to watch. 
You always like to see a guy get up and walk away from that in a hurry. That's exactly right. There's nothing worse than someone falling into your knee like that. That foul instead it was on Marvin Moore and that is his first and is against the Owls number five here in the second half. Two shots for Lamont Dale. Lamont Dale has come off the bench here in the second half to score 11 points. Misses the free throw. He had five in the first half has 11 in the second half. He has 16. Will Flemings has 18. And Lance Hughes has 16 for Texas Tech. Rice is leading score. Well, Brent Scott has not scored a point here in the second half after getting 10 in the first half. Lamont Dale gets one out of two. Dana Hardy got his own rebound. The 6-2 guard put it back up and in. Nice perseverance by a 6-2 guard, Dana Hardy. Was interesting, Dana Hardy's only like one or two free throws away for the entire season being the second leading rebounder on Rice's team. Incidentally, the 11 three-pointers that Texas Tech has right now ties the Southwest Conference record for Tech for three-pointers in a game. The most ever, 15. Tech did that against Houston Baptist and Texas against LSU. Air ball and Flemons puts it back up and in. Clemens has 20 points on the afternoon with that 47-inch sleeve leg. Is that possible? Kenneth Roark comes right back. Nice outside dribble by Holt Roark. Both teams heating it up again. 76-64, Tech by 12. Just under 10 minutes to play, 9.57 remaining. Rice is in a man-to-man -man press, but what they want to do is they want to get the guy dribbling the ball to turn his back to somebody. And as soon as they do, someone's going to run up and double-team it, and then the guy nearest to the man who went on the double-team is going to have to run through the passing lane. Let's see if they can pull it off. Part of the crowd here, some, some future chance. Look at Clemens wide open, and he got the layup despite heavy pressure from Brork. That was a great play by Will Flemons, a great pass. Who threw that length of the floor I didn't pass? see it, but that was a great out-of-bounds pass. Boy, what a play, and Flemons converted it into the points. Bork, an air ball, rebounded by Texas Tech's Lamont Dale. They've got a three-on-three -three break. Flemons. Out of bounds off Flemons, it belonged to Rice. Well, we talked about it last week with Texas Tech. When James Dickey came in with his new, his new running up-tempo style basketball, he says, hey, Defense is going to be the cornerstone of our philosophy, but when we get the ball, we're going to run, run, and run. And they're doing a good job of staying aggressive. Here's that pass play. Didn't, oh, it's Lamont Dale who threw it, thanks to our director, Lee Friday, our producer, Lee Friday. Great job. He didn't even have control of the ball as he went up. He did a good job of sticking that ball in the hole. Yeah, John Crow's the director, and Lee Friday's the producer. I knew that. In the heat of battle, man, sometimes you forget those things. There's Rourke. Put it up and in. Kenneth Rourke three second half baskets and a couple of free throws and it's 78 66 rice within 12 but remember tech is added to an 11 point halftime lead we talked about brent scott being tired kenneth Ward stepped in and he's actually they're getting more production out of out of ward down low than they were scott nine minutes exactly left to play in the ball game brian moore another three-pointer that is 12 for texas tech and ten and sets a school record brian moore with tech's 12 three-pointer setting a school record in conference play Dana Hardy comes right back with a two-pointer for the Rice Owls. 81-68, 13-point Texas Tech lead. Brian Moore kicks it off to Adam Austin. Austin traveled to the ball. Remember earlier, a month ago today in Lubbock, Rice won this game by 15 points, 84-69. 30 days later, on the Rice home floor, the Texas Tech Red Raiders are leading by 13, 81-68. It was interesting in that last matchup, Rice had just gotten through being, being really destroyed by U of H here at home, and then they went up to Tech and played their best game of the year. And so it was interesting to see after just recently barely losing to U of H here in the second round, it was interesting to see how they were going to respond today. And they haven't responded real well. Okay, there you go. Those are the field goals. 12, three-pointers. 12 for Texas Tech, six for Rice, 18 of them. And I think that, well, I don't think that sets the Southwest Conference record for most between two teams. I'll tell you about that in a moment. Here's Scott Times. Tori Andrews with the basket. And here's a quick steal, and the Owls trying to come back. Now they're down by 11. Brent Scott with the ball. They're still down. Now Scott got his own rebound. Power play. That's his first basket of the second half for the 6'10", 250-pound center. And the Owls are back to within nine. We've got a brand-new ball game with 8.04 remaining to play in the game. It's Rice now down by nine, 81-72. Don't go away. This one's getting hot. Fort Trust, the best. When we made the best-built, best-selling Ford full-size pickup more stylish, we also made it a more comfortable place for people. Why did we make Explorer so spacious? 
because that's what people need. Ford redefined the word truck, but we didn't forget who made us number one. More people are driving the best-built, best-selling American trucks than ever before. A nation's people are a nation's strength, and the strength of a bank called Nations Bank, a bank that now has the resources and the locations to reach one out of every four people in the nation. A bank that measures its success with the success of every community it serves, from Baltimore to Miami to El Paso. It's no wonder a bank that sees its strength in the neighborhoods of a nation would today be called Nations Bank. I'll take the special. I'll take the special. I'll take the special. And you should too. The monthly specials at True Value Hardware Stores. Like this low temperature mini glue gun for just $2.99. It operates cooler for safer gluing. And in February, it's just $2.99 while supplies last. That's just one of the terrific specials at True Value, the neighborhood hardware stores with national chain store buying power. I'll take the special. Okay, we're back at Autry Court where we have had a rain of three pointers today, 17 overall, and there's Will Flemons who leads all scores right now with 20 points in the uh, three-point battle uh, mo figures we gave you a moment ago. Actually, the most ever is 22. Rice and Arkansas combined for 22 in a game in 1988. Right now, we've got 17 right now. It's interesting to see Texas Tech out on the floor during that timeout. A lot of schools have been doing that because Rice has done such a good job of generating interest among the student body, and they are rowdy back there. It's eight minutes left on the clock, 81-72. The Rice Owls trailing the Texas Tech Red Raiders. They've just cut it down, and the Owls, here goes Lance Hughes inside. And a blocking foul, let's see if the basket's going to count. A blocking foul against the Rice Owls. Tony Stigliano will tell us whether the basket will count or not. Blocking foul on Rice, and the basket will count. Excellent body control by Lance Hughes. Watch how he goes in and he's, he's penetrating, but he's able to stop, do a jump stop, and go straight up in the air. Good body control. As Brent Scott moved up under him, and that's a good call. 18 points for Lance Hughes. The skinny freshman out of Georgetown. A lot of folks said he couldn't play Southwest Conference basketball. He's proven them wrong. Yeah, a lot of folks were wrong. The free throw is good, and he now has 18 points. Did Scott lose it out of bounds? No, it's out off Flemings. 84-72. Texas Tech by 12. Flemons playing with three fouls. Lamont Dale with three. And for the Owls, Dana Hardy has three. Brent Scott, who's just not been much of a factor in the second half with one basket for 12 points. He had 10 at the end of the first half. Running it down. Kicked out of bounds by the Owls, I believe. It'll belong to Texas Tech. I really, nope. think, I really think Brent Scott got tired early on in the game, and he's not working as hard for the ball, and I can only think two or three times that he's gotten the ball and made a post. Let's look move. at this. It looked like Lamont Dale came up, uh, had that ball knocked out of bounds. Back to the live action. Marvin Moore is fouled big time by Lamont Dale. Dale's just picked up his fourth foul. He really fouled Marvin Moore. He got his money's worth on that foul. If you're going to foul somebody, you might as well make it count, and he really got all of him. Lamont Dale's a specimen. He looks like, I can't decide whether he's a little uh, linebacker or halfback. You know, he is just, he is really ripped. And Marvin Moore at 5'11". Look at his shoulders, uh, Bree. There's the secret right there. Look at those shoulders. That's what you call buff. 6'3", <laughs> 215 pounds, a senior letterman from Snow Hill, Maryland, Lamont Dale. Defensive specialist when he needs to be. Today is also, also turned scorer in the second half. Has a total of 17 points in the ballgame, 12 in the second half alone. And the free throw by Marvin Moore is good. Nice soft touch. Marvin Moore, we pointed out earlier, shooting 83% from the line. Anything over 80% is outstanding from the free throw line. That foul on Bryant uh, Moore, rather on Bone Ashley, was his good. Three free throws. He was shooting a three. He's got two of them, so he'll come back for the third one. This could cut the lead down to a nine-point advantage again with 7.42 to go. Texas Tech 84, Rice 74 right before this free throw. Still 74. Battle for the rebound, and who's got it? Adam Peaks. So the Owls have a chance. Here the Owls with a three-pointer. Yes, Harvey Moore. Another three-pointer. That's a five-point play. He got three on the basket, the free throw, and then another three-pointer. My gosh, a five-point play for Marvin Moore. It's a seven-point lead, and Tech wants timeout. A seven-point lead for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. He caught five seconds before the timeout. That's a turnover. He did. He sure did. So the Tech team did not get the timeout called, or did they? We've got a timeout. 
I don't know. We'll see when we come back who's got the basketball. 84 77, 723 to go. This one's fixing to get even better, so stay with us. From this day on, every Domino's pizza will be better than ever. Every fresh made Domino's pizza better than ever now and forever. Try a medium with unlimited toppings now just $9.99. It's time for Southwest Airlines' Friends Fly Free Sale again. Wake up and smell the coffee. And people are friendlier than ever. Just make reservations at least a day in advance and buy your round-trip ticket at our regular low unrestricted fare and a friend flies with you, free. And now, fly through May 21st. Yo, Dad, what do you think? I've been, neighbor old buddy. I'm driving. Southwest Airlines' Friends Fly Free Sale. Because a friend in need is, well, a friend in need. Come on. Hey, what do you want in a beer? Oh, come on. Do you want a great beer that's less filling? Well, come on. Then let me show you everything you want a beer to be. Cold Miller Lite, it's it. And after that, come on. Come on, let me show you where it's at. Come on. Come on. Cause I like it like that. Since we're talking beer, let's cut the chip chat. Miller Lite, it's it. Everything you want a beer to be. And that's that. Come on. There's Scott Thompson, the Owls, planning their strategy. Boy, Reed, that was a quick five-second call. We're told the ball will belong to the Rice Owls. But that, 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 that was 1,000, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5. I think it was getting quicker. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rice has the basketball. They're down by 7. There's 7.23 to go. Boy, this crowd is getting with it. Not a big one, maybe about 3,000. Rice is on spring break, but they're really with this ball game right now. Whoops, wait a minute now. What's the official? Charlie Fiss is calling them back over. Field goals this half alone, 68% for the Red Raiders, 54% for the Owls. Attendance, 3,322. 33-22. Not bad for spring break. No rice students here. They're going on spring break. They're skiing somewhere, I guess. Huh? Yeah. All right, right, here's the inbounds play. Rice to the ball. Chance to cut the lead down to five. Peaks. Didn't get it, but it was fouled by Lance Hughes. Boy, Rice got away with one. Lance Hughes might have hit his arm, but Adam Peaks released his offhand and really shoved Lance Hughes as he jumped by. Well, let's see what the situation will be. That will be team foul number 10, and I believe that means that now, yeah, it does. Two shots on every foul from here on in for the Rice Owls. Lamont Dale and Bryant Moore back in the ballgame. Stacey Bailey and Chad Collins go out. Well, Rice has really rattled Tech the last couple times with their full court pressure. I'm sure during that timeout, James Dickey was saying, hey, look, don't go crazy. Keep your head, keep your poise, be composed, and go ahead and keep doing exactly what we're doing. Don't get rattled because of the crowd, and that's a hard thing to talk a young team into doing. Now, remember, Rice has only missed four free throws all afternoon long. They're the best free throw shooting team in the league by one of the best in the country, and they now have a chance to catch up at the foul line. Two, every foul is a two-shot foul now. Peaks gets two more of them. That makes it an 84-79 lead. It's a five-point ball game. Biggest lead in the ball game, Ed, was what? 16-point lead. Ed Burleson tells us that it was a 16-point lead. It was the biggest of the ball game. It's down now to five with 7.14 to go and on Rice's home floor. Brian Moore showing some senior leadership. It's a full-court man-to-man press, giving the ball, and everybody else, get out of the way and get all the double teams down on the other end of the floor. This is Brian Moore with the ball. Seven minutes exactly to play. 84-79, Tech by five. Lance Hughes. Was he fouled? No basket. Fouled to the floor by Torrey Andrews. Andrews will pick up his first foul. That'll be number eight against the Owls. I'm sorry, it's Sam Campbell on the foul. That's his third, not Tory Andrews' first. Lance Hughes does a great job of driving baseline. Seems like the, every shot he's hit today has been he's gone baseline, gotten down there, and then with that excellent jumping ability, just jumps up whoever's jump up jumps up over whoever's there. So they call that foul on. Sam Campbell, well, he's not even in the ball game. Number 13's not even in there. I believe he checked in a while ago, and he was bumping him as he went down along the baseline. Lance Hughes with a second free throw for the Red Raiders. So the timeout's remaining, three for Rice and one for Texas Tech. Go ahead, Brent, or Reed. Well, you're right. I don't see Sam Campbell. Maybe we missed him checking out of the game. Well, I'm not kidding you. He's not in the ball game. So how can they call a foul on Sam Campbell, his third foul? He's not in the ballgame. 
they should have. Tory Andrews should have had the foul. They got the basket, too. Well, that's good coaching. That's how you keep your players out of foul trouble. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, look out. We're going to get a ball here. Clemens. Nice pass inside to Austin. Couldn't get it. Tipped it to the outside. Marvin Moore. A basket here would cut it down to a three-point lead or a two-point lead. And the loose ball belongs to Texas Tech. Well, I don't know who the ball went off of, but that was awful close to a charge. Brian Moore did a great job of getting down there, hustling down, getting in front of in front of the lightning quick. Marvin Moore. There's corroboration of what we've been saying. The last foul was called on number 13 for Rice. That's Sam Campbell's number, and he's not even in the ball game, nor was he when the foul was called. Now, how can a guy get a foul called on him when he's not in the lineup? The ref said, who's that foul on? Scott said, oh, this guy here next to me. You I, got guess, him. I guess you're right. <laughs> So somehow a guy got a phantom foul. Sam Campbell picked up a foul when he wasn't even in the ball game. 86-81, 6.09 to play. Texas Tech by five. This has been a weird one, folks, but it's been a good one. Clemens, Lance Hughes, Dale for three. Didn't get it. Lance Hughes gets the rebound and put it back up and in. Lance Hughes. How is that 6'4 freshman doing what he's doing? He has a great... Uh, a phrase a clinch is always using a good nose for the ball it seems like every time it comes down Lance Hughes is right there amongst it 21 points and here's a steal by Lamont Dale 88 81 Tech with a seven point lead five and a half minutes to play in the ball game Hughes Fleming he's fouled fouled by Tory Andrews watch how Lance Hughes just stays in there most of we keep saying he's light he's six four six five and weighs 170 pounds he's in there with with Brent Scott at 250 and, and Tory Andrews at 225 and he's in there getting a job done tell you what it's amazing as I look out at him I'm showing my age here but I remember his dad playing for Texas in 1957 through 1960 Brenton Hughes and they look almost exactly alike Clemens with a rare miss of a free throw he's four out of five today at the stripe the pride of Paducah, 6'7", 225-pound junior, two-letter man. Most everybody agrees that the player of the year in the Southwest Conference will be either this guy, Will Flemons, or David Wesley of Baylor. Except for the people in Austin. Oh, you heard from him, <laughs> did you? Flemons makes one free throw. All right, it is an 89-81, eight-point lead for the Texas Tech Red Raiders with 5.20 to play in the ballgame. Hardy. Blocked and fouled by Bryant Moore. That'll be a two-shot foul. That'll give Rice a chance to close the gap down to six. Tech coaching staff's talking to Bryant Moore. Bryant Moore got beat on a pump fake, hustled back, retreated, got in great position, went up, had great defense, and instead of just keeping his arm straight up in the air, fell the temptation and came down across Dana Hardy's arm as he was shooting. Rice has had 21 free throw opportunities today. They missed only four. Four out of 21. They're 17 out of 21 at the strike. The best shooting free throw team in the conference, and at 71.5%, one of the best in the country. Well, he didn't get that time. They're 17 out of 22 now. That's the first free throw shot by Dana Hardy today. Only Rice player to make over 100 assists four different times. That is four different years. Missed two of them badly. Oh, my goodness. I should never have said what I did, huh? That's right. Two missed free throws by Hardy. That's the first time that's happened to Rice today. Lamont Dale powers it up there. And the rebound, Adam Peaks. Rice down by eight. Five minutes to play in the ballgame. Rice would drop to five and five if they lose this one here. If they win it, they'll go to six and four. Texas Tech is four and six. So obviously would go to five and six or would drop to four and seven. Tory Andrews had it blocked, and Marvin Moore comes out of there with a brand new 45. No, same 45. Look for Rice to really start going to Brent Scott. He's not, he's not exerting himself down there at all. Corey Andrews gets another two-pointer. Andrews now has hit the last four rice baskets in a row. 89-83, four and a half minutes to play. Tech with a six-point lead. Good job of Tech of handling the man-to-man -man press. What you want to do is what we said earlier, just clear everybody out so there's no one there to double-team you and you let your point guard bring the ball up. Rice is working on a win string of five in a row in this series and seven out of the last eight. So that's the kind of domination this series has seen by Rice in the most recent games, but not this afternoon. Clemens. Oh, he can do it all, can't he? Out on the top of the circle, down below. Block a shot, run to the other end, post up and score. How could a guy do much more for his size than Will Flemings? Eight seconds to shoot. I don't know if Tech knows it or not. Five to shoot. Brian Moore knows it. Yes, he does. Brian Moore took it to the hook with four seconds left on the clock. Well, they milked the clock to its fullest at that point. 
Well, Scott Thompson's got to be disappointed with that. They had absolutely no weak side defense help. Brian Moore got the ball at the top of the key, dribbled all the way down around, and ended up shooting a layup, and nobody came over to help. Everybody was concentrating so hard on their man that no one was watching the ball, and that's a defensive breakdown. Well, if you're wondering, in case you're a Tech fan, the Tech uh, record for the number of points this year, 118 against Houston Baptist. They've got 91 right now. That was the game in which they hit 15 three-pointers. Here's Dana Hardy. And shot 32 of them. <laughs> That's right. Dana now gets his first free throw of the day. He's one out of three at the stripe. Hit two early three-pointers. Since that time, has hit uh, four more three two-pointers. I'm not sure if I Scott Thompson that, that I wouldn't go back to Kenneth Moore. He was really getting some points, getting some production down low. And Brent Scott, quite honestly, just looks flat beat. Well, certainly it's been no contest in the battle between he and Flemons today. Flemons has beaten him to the other end of the floor every time. Flemons has a total of 23 points in the ball game right now, averaging 19 and 10 rebounds, and I suspect he's got 10 rebounds as well. Watch Adam Peaks on this uh, foul a minute ago. He kind of got tackled him a little bit, didn't he? Ref, I didn't touch him. I wasn't anywhere near him. That's his third foul, and here's Lance Hughes at the line. Lance makes the free throw, getting the shooter's roll. He is three out of four at the strike. 22 points for Lance Hughes. That's got to be a career high for him. 23 for Lance Hughes, the freshman from Georgetown. Well, Lance wishes they played Rice more often. He had 17 or 18 last time they played. 93-84, Tech up by nine with 3.39 to go. And wide open is Adam Peaks, missing the three-pointer. Rebounded by Torrey Andrews, put it up and didn't get it. Hardy comes out of there with it. Marvin Moore for three. Tip bucks. Lemons lost it out of bounds, but I guess Adam Peaks touched it last. Incidentally, Brad Dale is in the line of for Texas Tech, number 33. There's James Dickey. Boy, what a job he's done at Tech. He really, he really has. He is such a winner, and, and he's instilling so much in the guys off the court, too. That everybody in love has got to be tickled to death with the job he's doing. Well, they call a... Uh, they call a all in the possession jump ball on that one. Watch how well Will Flemings keeps his arm straight up in the air. Look, he's got his arm straight up. He doesn't come down, just bends his wrist and gets a great block. That's why he hadn't fouled out of any games this year. Is that right? He hadn't fouled out of a single game? Not out of a Is single right? game. Lamont Dale with the ball. Texas Tech trying to run some clock. 3.14 to go. They lead it. 93-84. Lance Hughes. He's got the hot hand right now for Texas Tech. Skip Tech, pass. Tech spread it out, and Rice is having to extend their half-court trap. They're in a man-to-man, -man, but they're going to run a double team at the ball whenever they can. Three minutes exactly to play in the ball game. 93 for Tech, 84 for Rice. Three minutes to go. Right now, the, the five-second rule, he's got five seconds to dribble, then he can pick it up and hold it another five seconds, and the player's got to be within six feet of him. Hughes, don't bet against this one. By golly, he did it again. Lance Hughes, he now has nine baskets on the day. Three of them have been three, two of them have been three-pointers. Well, let's use hit that zone where it looks like he could drop kick one in. Marvin Moore for three. Yes, for Rice. Marvin Moore comes back. That is his fourth three-pointer of the day. We'll have to add up these combined three-pointers because we may have a conference record. 22 is the conference record for combined three-pointers by two teams. And the next time out, I'll check them out for you. The foul is on Adam Peaks, and that may be his fourth. Foul foul on Adam Peaks for 33. Fourth person, Kenneth Moore, the third for lineup the out. Rice has seven three-pointers. Texas Tech really doesn't have a bad free throw shooter on the floor. So as far as who you're going to pick out the foul, I guess Lamont Dale's at the lowest at, at 65, but he's a good free throw shooter. So there's not really anyone you can single out the foul, although I wouldn't foul this guy. No, Will Flemons, who is a 78% free throw shooter, is five out of six on the day, six out of seven. Well, there you can see percentage-wise who to foul for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Damone Ashley is your best bet. Of course, he's probably not going to handle the ball. Lamont Dale's a pretty good bet. Clemens would be 7 out of 8 if he makes this free throw and would have 25 points. Well, the other guy for Tech that struggles at the line is Allen Austin, and you'll notice neither Ashley nor Austin are on the floor. 96-87, Texas Tech with a 9-point lead right now with 2.10 to play in the ballgame. There have been a total of 19 three-pointers by these two teams. That's three off the conference record by the combined two teams. Peaks. Here goes an effort for number Dana Hardy. That is the 20th three-pointer registered today by these two teams. 12 and 8. 
So the Texas Tech Red Raiders lead is down to six with a minute 56 to go. 96 90. Stand by. Out of order. Stairs. Oh. oh. You know what I could use? A diet doctor. Pepper! Dr. Pepper tastes more like regular Dr. Pepper. When you want one, there's no stopping the taste. With 100% NutraSweet. Hey, help yourself. A nation's business is a nation's strength. And the strength of a bank called Nations Bank. A bank that now has over 2,000 locations to provide even the smallest business access to the largest resources. A bank that measures its strength by the strength of every business it serves. From Baltimore to Miami to El Paso. It's no wonder a bank that grew strong with the nation's business would today be called Nation's Bank. Frank Fallon back with Reed Getty is at Autry Court in the uh, campus of Rice University where the uh, Texas Tech Red Raiders are only a minute and 56 seconds away from a victory that would propel their conference record to five and six and would move them to 13 and 10 on the season. And right now, unofficially, Reed, I show 12 Texas Tech three-pointers, eight Rice three-pointers, which would be 20, two off the uh, record by any two teams in the conference. Rice has done a good job of establishing home court advantage. You see how Texas Tech had to come out on the floor for their timeout? And that's during spring break when the students aren't even here. I understand the Domino's Pizza instantly has arrived in the truck and the director and the producer and the staff are now having Domino's Pizza while you and I are still working. I don't remember anybody asking me what kind of pizza I, I don't either. I don't remember anybody. And nobody's brought any out here to show it. We have to really take their word for it. I'm sure it's there. All right, here's Brian Moore, Lamont Dale, a minute 42 to go, six-point lead for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Brad Dale, Will Flemons, Lance Hughes, boy, he's red hot. But those that back out, they're using as much clock as they can. I don't think Rice can be content just to chase the ball. I think they need to gamble. They need to go for some steals and create or have some fouls and make them win it at the free throw line. Well, Tech just threw it away. But your point is well taken, Reed, because at this point, each team has committed 10 fouls, so any foul is a two-shot foul. It's not the old traditional one-and-one. One. So here come the Owls back with the clock running. A minute 18, and Dana Hardy kind of walks the ball into the forecourt, down by six. You've got to believe Rice will try some threes. There's Hardy with a three-pointer. That is off the mark. Battle four by Rourke and Adam Peaks. Well, we've got a minute five to go and a six-point Texas Tech lead, and the Red Raiders are about to get their first victory in the last six games with Rice. A five-game Rice winning streak and seven out of the last eight in this series. Great effort by Marvin Moore. 105, still on the clock, 96-90. Well, there are the Rice Owls as far as the three-pointers are concerned. Hardy and Moore, Peaks and Holmes, all capable of doing it. Anything in the 30s is in the top 10 of the, of the Southwest Conference. So anything in the 40s is at the top. Good pass by Flemons, but Hardy lost the ball, but was he fouled by Dana Hardy? If he is, Hardy has just committed his fourth foul. Well, Tech was really lucky. I, I felt like Lance Hughes traveled just then, and that's a mistake. It's very hard to catch the ball on a dead run out over your shoulder like a wide receiver, especially when you don't know what's in front of you. What you want to do, ideally, the correct fundamentals are to, are to get under the ball, jump straight up, catch the ball, and then turn around and face the, face the other end and see what's there. Lance Hughes back at the free throw line where today he has hit four out of five from the stripe shooting a pair. Georgetown freshman 6'4", 170 pounder. Say again his dad played in the late 1950s at the University of Texas. Brenton Hughes. And this is obviously his career day at uh, Texas Tech. 98 to 90. Seven out of eight at the free throw line for Lance Hughes. Al's with less than a minute to go. Marvin Moore tosses it up and in. Bryce going to call a timeout. We'll check the timeouts remaining for the two teams. Well, we've got 57.21 seconds remaining. It is Texas Tech 98, Rice 92 at Autry Court. Gillette presents Sensor, the system, the technology that will change the way you shave forever. Sensor, twin blades set on springs to read your face and respond independent suspension to sense and adjust to every curve of your face. No other razor comes close. Gillette Sensor for the best shave a man can get. 
Did you know the cost of two business calls from these San Diego pet stores to Dallas may surprise you? Of course they're easy to feed. With AT&T Long Distance, your small business can get the quality you trust at extremely competitive prices. They really do make perfect pets. Even though the other company would like you to believe, they always save you lots of money. That's my big savings? That's it. Not exactly the catch of the day. Competitive price. Another AT&T advantage. Well, we were talking to Kelly Robinson a moment ago, the sports information director for basketball for Texas Tech. And Kelly said that Lance Hughes has 29 points, which is a new season high for Texas Tech. Earlier this year, Will Flemons had 28 in a non-conference game. Hughes has 29 points, and that is the most all year long for any Texas Tech Red Raider. What a day for this freshman from Georgetown. Yeah, and let's keep stressing, he's a freshman. A true freshman. A true freshman. All right, here comes the full court pressure, 98-92. Rice tra down by six with 57.21 seconds left to play in the ball game. And a quick foul by Marvin Moore. Stops the clock at the 54.92 mark. That really confuses you when you look up there at that uh, 54 point. They used to do it. Most places have it in tenths of a second. They've got it in hundreds of a second here at Rice. So which of course is even more of a more definitive uh, time separation. I'm not sure you really need to know all that. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You're right. I can't keep up with all that. I'll tell you what. I, I remember back in the days when they had the old sweep second hand read. You don't remember that. Yeah, That's so when you had to go down to the floor and looking back over your shoulder to see how many seconds were still on the clock. Yeah, I'm afraid you got me on that one. Brian <laughs> right, Moore with the free throw. I thought that was a good foul by Marvin Moore. You don't want to take just a sloppy foul, but go for the ball. Go for steals. And even though they're shooting two free throws, you've got to make something happen. You can't just chase the ball. Well, the question now becomes who's going to be our player of the game? Is it going to be Lance Hughes or is it going to be Will Fleming? You could pick either one, couldn't you? I I've got my vote, but uh, I'm low man on totem pole, so I'll wait and see what the rest of y'all say. Oh, Each team now, now the Rice has just used its last timeout. So Texas Tech has one timeout left, but they probably don't want it. While the Rice Owls have just used their last timeout with 46-63 remaining. Southwest Conference basketball has been brought to you by Southwest Airlines. By Dr. Pepper. By Ford and your Ford dealers. By Nations Bank. And by Miller Lite. Third time this year that the Rice Owls have been, or the uh, Texas Tech Red Raiders have reached the century mark. They scored 101 against Tulane, 118 against Houston Baptist. Obviously, this 194 lead is, barring a miracle, going to stand up with only 46 seconds remaining to play here at Autry Court. This will leave Texas Tech 5-6 five and six in the conference. We'll drop Rice to 5-5. Five and five. We'll leave Rice at 17-9 and nine on the season and move Texas Tech to 13-10 and 10 on the season. Well, I and think if early in the season you told James Dick or any of the Texas Tech followers that, hey, no, are going to end up at this point in the season. You're going to be 13 and 10. You're going to be right dab in the middle of the conference race. You're going to be in right in the middle of the standings. I don't think they'd have believed you. Well, certainly you'd had a hard time convincing a lot of skeptics, but the Raiders have done it. Here's the pass into Flemons, and he is not fouled. Lamont Dale gets away. 194, Texas Tech. They'll stop the clock to foul him. Adam Peaks will commit the foul, and he's fouled out of the ballgame. Well, we're pleased to announce that today's Southwest Airlines player of the game is Lance Hughes of Texas Tech. Lance Hughes, our Southwest Airlines player of the game. 29 points for the true freshman out of Georgetown with his career best. And obviously today uh, playing one of the best games he's ever played at any level. As the Red Raiders will have won this ball game, they lead by six with 40 seconds left to play. We've got some birds loose in the building. Look at there. There are a couple of sparrows up there. I'm not kidding you. Well, I'm not sure what's going on now. I don't know if Scott Thompson took a timeout or not. But I don't know why he gets to talk to his team over there. Well, they took their last time out a few minutes ago during our commercial break. They were away. That was their last time out. They're still talking, however. I really did see two sparrows fly across the court. Yes, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that I'm, was you talking to me, Reed. I'm looking. <laughs> I just committed the cardinal sin. I answered the producer on the air. But I thought that was you talking to me. <laughs> Well, I hope it doesn't keep him from telling me whatever it was he was going to tell me. They were afraid maybe those birds were imaginary and they were worried about you. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> well, 
Ahmad Dale back at the free throw line trying to add to a 194 victory and that'll be 101. Dale's had a good second half. He has scored 18 points himself. Had 13 of them here in the second half. There's James Dickey. Boy, he's got to be a happy guy. What a super person he is, too. I promise you. I'm so impressed with him. When I went and watched him practice last week, he made every guy on his team come over, shake hands with me, introduce themselves. And those are the type of things that, you know, the fans don't see. And that's building character in young men, and I'd like to see that. That's teaching them there's more to it than just basketball. That's exactly it? right. Dana Hardy with a quick two-pointer. And we're going to have, well, no, Rice doesn't have any more timeouts. They can't call anymore with 31 seconds left. 101-96, five-point lead. Watch for the long home run pass. They got all five Rice players up on this end of the floor. One of these guys, either Dale or Flemings, is going to set his man up and go long. Lamont Dale throwing it long to Will Flemings, who catches it with those long arms, and is fouled by Will Roar, by, by Kenneth Roar. It'll be his second. So Flemings will be back at the line. Flemings today has hit... Six out of eight at the line, has 24 points himself, 25 points. Two more shots for Will Fleming. We've talked a lot about Dickey in, in the program he's established. Scott Thompson had two goals when he got to Rice. One, he wanted to improve the level of basketball, and two, he wanted to increase the attendance and the support he got. And he has been extremely successful at both of them. I'm a big, big Scott Thompson fan, and I, I'm excited about what he's doing for the, for the Southwest Conference. As a matter of fact, you've got to be honest about it and say this, Reed. The big talk around the league is now if Rice can hang on to him. Well, it's going to be tough because he's he's a I mean, he's an attractive to any school that's out there looking for a coach. He's young, he's vivacious, he's energetic, and he's got a great, great system that he could put in anywhere. And he's built the program the right way here at Rice in the five years that he's been here. Dana Hardy, thanks to him off the back row. We'll make it a 103-98 ball game with 19 seconds to go. If I was Lance Hughes, that's what I'd do, too. As well as he's shooting as many points as he has, as it comes down to the end of the game, you know you're going to get fouled. Like, give me the ball. I want to go to the line again. You know, I don't have it available, but I wonder if this is maybe the most points the Tech's ever scored against Rice. 103-98. Good possibility that this 103 may be a new series high for Texas Tech. There's James Dickey. Well, it's going to be a nice quick trip back to Lubbock for the Red Raiders. There's that characteristic quick clapping in the hands. That's the old Eddie Sutton. There's Brent Scott. Red, who just hasn't been much of a factor in the ballgame, scored only 12 points today, and only two of those came in the second half, Reed. Matt Hughes gets yet another one. Well, Briscott just wasn't effective inside. Kenneth, oh, Rourke, Kenneth Rourke was the one that did their scoring inside, and Tori Andrews did a good job coasting up and getting some buckets inside also. And, Reed, he started out so well. Scott got 10 points in the first half in the first, oh, uh, I'd say, 12 minutes of the ballgame. 10 seconds to play, 105-98 in favor of the Red Raiders. So Tech is going to win this one. Maybe with the most points ever in this series. I just don't have that at my disposal, but it may well be that this 105 points is the most Tech has ever scored in the Rice series. We've got 8.79 seconds left to play. Don't forget, SMU and Texas coming up from Dallas in just a very few moments from Moody Coliseum as the conference leader takes on the Ponies. Hughes. I tell you, the way he's been shooting today, I wouldn't have been surprised if that had gone in. I was watching it when that's I, in. I wouldn't have been surprised <laughs> if it had gone in. But I used up about two seconds on the clock to throw it 94 feet. 105-98. Now the clock starts when Marvin Moore touches the ball. He'll shoot a three. And he'll miss it, and it's all over. So for our new caddies, this is Frank Fallon. Thanks for joining us. Stay with us for the Texas Longhorns and the SMU Mustangs up next on many of your local stations with a final score of 105-98 in favor of Tech. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Raycom. In the 100 years since the YMCA instructor invented the game,